You think this is a game? You think this is a game? Well, actually it is. And you can join me for my $5,000 showdown on GG Poker and watch me on their YouTube channel Tuesday, March 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern time or 11 p.m. Gimmit, Geneva, you know, Greenwich Mean Time. That's the GMT. And uh, I will see you there, guys. What is it? Four o'clock East Coast, uh, four, o'clock, four o'clock West Coast, seven o'clock East Coast, wherever you are, figure it out and be there. All right, pretty cool to get the chance to, you know, do this with you, Russell. I think the last time or the only time I saw you was in London about 8 a.m. for breakfast. And I was, I think, having vodka. And you were kind enough to give me tickets to your show. Do you remember that? I actually do remember that. And then we hung out in Vegas one time, didn't we? I am uh, i don't remember that. Maybe. I, remember, I do remember running into you in London at the airport. But then I remember running into you again in Vegas. And that, and that time, at least, we were both drunk. See, you must, I, that's what happens when you, whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, apparently. Yeah, yeah. You forgot about me like I'm some sort of tramp. <laughs> yeah, well, one of the things that happens in po- in Vegas is poker. And I was wondering, like, how much poker, you know, going into this, have you played? I've not played a lot of poker, but I have enjoyed it. I played a lot of video poker, if that counts. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's an entry level. To, it's an entry level poker, poker. But, like... You take it to the next level, like some of these, I mean, a lot of guys in your field, like a lot of other comedians sort of jumped in, like Kevin Hart, Norm MacDonald, Sarah Silverman, and whatnot. Um, you just and now everybody with a gambling problem. Everybody with a gambling Well, Norm, you know, poker. I don't know, Sarah, I don't think Sarah has one, but I know Kevin and, and Norm, they got a. Well, yeah. I think Norm went to poker to sort of alleviate the gambling problems he had before. Right, at least he's more in control of this gambling. Yeah. I what think. do you think it is about poker that you know is, you know comedians are driven to? Well, you got to think quickly, and you can't let them know what you're thinking about. So I think it's the same thing in stand-up. When you're when you're on stage, I'm looking at you, I'm talking to you, but you don't know that whatever I'm saying to you is not registering in my brain. I'm already thinking about what's happening next. I'm what's listening it? to your answers, and then I'm it's you know, and I'm plotting and planning because you're not. It's not about the immediate move. It's about the move after the move. Which I think is very similar in poker, isn't it? Yeah, would it be fair to say that like when you're up there, you're kind of reading the audience and you're trying to get a read of like where to go next and yeah. always thinking. Okay. Yeah, you want you want to know what, what your what your limits are with these people. You want to, you know, I, am I going to go too far if I make this kind of joke? Uh, they seem a little sensitive. Maybe I'll take them back this way and then I'll backdoor the joke in, you know, whatever. But yeah. we'll, we'll get it done however we need to get it done. I was going to say, I mean, it must be tough in 2021, like being a comedian out there, especially like in your lane, right? Because you push the envelope. I do. Well, here's the thing. The people that are coming to see me, I've been, look, I've been doing it 32 years, right? The people that are coming to see me already know what they're coming to see. And that's why they're there. And I think if I was to start to change um, and become soft and waver uh, uh, to the pressure that's out there, then my whole, I will lose my audience and I will never have gained the new audience. You know what I mean? So I'm going to be tried and true with my people. I love that. And it's what makes like, I'm, I'm a believer in like old school comedy. And that's why I'm a big fan of yours and what you do. And so is my brother. When I told my brother we're doing this, he's like, oh, tell him I said, hey, you know, like you guys yeah, see, are hanging and be buddies. I always refer to Daniel as the Michael Jordan of poker. Well, I don't know about that, but like it's on that, on that uh, lane, like, who are some of the guys that you watch play poker, or like try to learn from if, you know, if you're, you know, I know you're new to it, but is there anybody that you watch that you sort of say, I mean, you're, I'm you're like that guy. You're literally the marquee name. And then I would watch Gabe Kaplan play. Well, yeah, like Gabe. Gabe as a player. Well, Gabe is old school, you know, he, you know, he, he's a commentator more or less these days, but he plays in those cushy, you know, Hollywood po- po- private poker games. I mean, do you ever get invited to games like that? I, yeah, Bruce Buffer had invited me to one. And then I was like, Bruce, I don't know the game well enough to be sitting in on a tournament like that, especially if my money's on the line. I definitely not ready for that. But, but if somebody else's money, you're fronting me, I'll try it out. Sure, why not? Okay, like if you could come up with your dream Hollywood poker game lineup, like who's in that game? I mean, who do you want to fleece? Um, I would like to play against Michael Jordan, actually Michael Jordan, because I know he's a big, I think he's a big poker player too, isn't he? He gambles on everything. Yeah. He does. Oh, yeah, basically. And, uh, the, you know, most of the time, I, uh, my gambling in Vegas consists of she looks clean, you know, but. <laughs> see, those are, see, that's high stakes, what you're playing. That's high stakes. It certainly is. 
right. All right. So let's get down to the five thousand dollar showdown. I'm excited to see you in action. Thousand dollars. Yeah. Why don't you tell me what's the deal with that? What exactly is happening? Okay. So it's a five dollar buy-in, and uh, and you can win five grand. Really, I don't know much more to tell you. <laughs> five for five. I mean, that's a pretty good return on investment, as far as I'm concerned. All right, and this happens March 30th, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And yes, apparently, if somebody knocks you out, there's like, we call this a bounty. I don't know if you've ever had a bounty on your head. I, well, I probably have, but an actual one. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So there is a $50 bounty on you. So whoever knocks you out is gonna get 50 bucks, which means you're gonna have to adjust your play. Are you ready for all that? I mean, listen, I, I'm, because I'm not so versed in it, here's what people don't understand about me. If I don't know something, I'm gonna go out of my way to learn it. And I'm gonna make sure I understand the ins and outs. And I'm gonna be calling Daniel Negreanu and I'm gonna be asking him, yo man, I need a little help with this. What would you do in this situation? All right, well, my advice can be pretty simple. It's gonna be like, when in doubt, yeah. just go all in. Like we talked a little bit, it's yeah. really, when in doubt, you're like, I don't know, shit, all in. That's like, it can't ever be that bad. We were playing when we were on tour a few years ago and I think I have a picture of it, just a picture of me going like this, <laughs> grabbing the pot and sucking it in because I went all in. I just kept going all in. I kept going all in, all in like this. I just kept doing this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's tough to play again. So like, uh, so this all happened on GG Poker. Um, you'll be playing online. You won't get to see the people and stuff like that, but uh, should be a lot of fun. I'm excited to see. I don't think you're gonna win, to be honest with you, but I-, I, I think You know what? I'm, I'm going all in, kids. <laughs> And I just want to warn you beforehand, you know I don't know how to play poker, right? But you don't? I don't. I'm actually going to study it tonight. Okay. Just to clarify, what poker is this game? No Limit Hold'em. Yes. No Limit Hold'em. Okay. Yeah. That's Texas Hold'em, right? Hello everyone and welcome to week 42 already of the High Rollers Super Millions where it is time for our pre-pre-show. We've got a lot of pre-shows over here. I'm Kevin Goy, also known as Rotterdam, and I am as always joined by Nana Noko. Nana Noko, how are we doing on this mighty fine Wednesday morning for you? Uh, I'm happy to be here, Roddy. Every time, every week at this time, we get some fun hands, some uh, familiar faces as usual, and we get to hear about Roddy's final table betting, which is, uh, you know, sometimes it's been going great lately, I feel like. Maybe not the last time, but, you know, in general, uh, I'd say you're doing good this year. And I thought I was going to spice it up, Nanonoko. I haven't placed any bet yet, and I was like, why don't I use our pre-pre-show for some actual live Roddy bets, you know? Nanonoka can only sit there and laugh at me losing all my bets and my money going up in flames. But I was like, you know what? What if I kind of discuss it with you? And what if we can find a middle ground then and then maybe you support my bets? So let's not spend any time, guys. We have eight minutes left to place our bets for this week. Let's go ahead and take a look at the nine players that have made it to this final table. And of course, the odds they have one that really stands out for me, Nananok. Well, I've got two guys, actually three guys that really stand out, okay? L hear me out. I know you're ready. I think Adrian Mateus is a really solid bet. He's got, he's coming in with a monster stack. We know that he's a crusher. He has never won the High Roller Super Millions, if I recall correctly, but many final tables. I don't think you can really go wrong with him. It says, obviously, the payouts are not as massive as two guys that I'm very fans, uh, fond of in the center. Yuri, our reigning defending champion. Like, how can you go wrong with Yuri? And Romashka, because you know Romashka is here to win it all. Nananoka, what do you say? Well, I mean, it's kind of funny that you're interested in Adrian Mateos, because apparently last week, Michael O'Donnell didn't get you excited. He had an even bigger chip lead, right? Uh, very similar type odds. But, uh, you know, obviously, in general, Adrian Mateos would be a solid choice. He's not as reckless as uh, Adamo. Um, 
So maybe he's more likely to get it done. Who knows? It's a little bit, it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, but yes, in the middle, I think Yuri really stands out because we've seen him at our final table multiple times, right? But I believe last week was the week that he just really shined that time, right? Like uh, we just really memorized, um, uh, we, rem we remember him now. Uh, he's in the middle. <laughs> We know he's capable of doing things. Um, he's he's got great reads, great, great instinct, because he did have the great insight onto how Adam was playing throughout that final table, and it, it paid off for him. He shipped the tournament, right? Um, and but you know, Ramoshka, right? Uh, he's a little. He got a little yellow tag on his name now. The little influencer there. Um, he's not a professional poker player, I don't think, but he loves the game. And that's why the odds are also in your favor, right? Like, he's got 2 million chips coming in a fourth position. He's got 15.2 odds to win. He's crazy, right? Like, if, you, if you're if going to bet on a guy to win, you, you want him to be crazy, right? You want him to kind mm -hmm. of just go for it, go for that win. And if he gets ninth, eighth, seventh, sixth, even second place, it doesn't matter. you got to win to win the final table betting. So Ramashka is the type of guy. And with the odds to win... Um, I think it's in your favor. Like, he's kind of reckless in some spots, but because of how much a better value you get from the odds, uh, I do kind of like your bet there. So, I mean, you haven't made a bet yet, but uh, nope. I personally would go for Sam Greenwood. I feel, uh, I know he's only been at our final table twice, but he's he's a good reg. He under, he's very aggressive. He kind of doesn't skip a spot. So if it's a close spot, he always kind of goes for it. He'll splash a bit more. And he's also in the middle pack. I like the middle pack because they yeah. kind of you kind of get more than a three point two to one, right? You get like a ten to one plus. Um, yeah, because like, it's the same green one. He's like at the he's at the top of the middle, you know, right? Because mm -hmm. once you start getting to three million chip stacks, the odds to win go way down. Because otherwise, I would really like Alexa Boyka just in the sense that I know he did he was kind of reshoving on Adamo a lot last week. And it just shows goes to show that he's willing to play for the win. That's the type of guy you want. All right. So I think we're gonna send fifty on Yuri. Okay, that's that's acceptable, Nanonoko. You down with this one? <laughs> fifty dollars to win six hundred or five fifty profit. Send it locked in. Now, I do think that David Corman is obviously kind of a crusher too. But one point one million, I think that's gonna be very very difficult to run it up. So I'm not feeling that one. I do feel since we are kind of, at least I am a little bit of a fanboy of Romashka, and he gave us one of our most fun and exciting final tables that we've had. I think we'll put 25 on Romashka. I know that he's probably going to bluff it off somewhere in the middle, but you know what? The dead man deserves it. A lot of the Russians have supported me this week in the Omaha streets, so I'm just giving back to the community. You know? <laughs> 25 on Romashka. And then, you know what? I've changed my mind. Yes, Adrian Mateus is a chip leader. Yes, he's very good. But he could have indeed a little bit of a Lina 900 curse where he can make a lot of final tables. In his defense, though, I feel like whenever he made our final table, he, he always came in as 7th, 8th, or ninth, right? He never really had a proper stack to win it all, if I recall correctly. So we're going to forget about him. I mean, you know that Jao Vieira, he's that to me, like that, that man. Like, he's <laughs> top three, sure, congrats, mate, but no, not a dollar. Uh, so Alexa Boyka or Sam Greenwood, we gotta choose, Nano. I have five minutes left. We gotta choose. You gotta go for Sam Greenwood if you had to choose between the middle. I feel like not. You like the guys where you get a little bit of extra payout when you win, right? You don't want to win a small bet. You gotta go for Sam Greenwood. Nine point five, one point seven million stack. But I will say this: Alexa Boyka is your type of player. He's a, mm -hmm. I think he's a Russian name or, or something like that, right? You, you got tricked Bella by Russian. Mexico. Bella, you like Bella the guys Russian. who just have the names I can't pronounce? You seem to be your guys. That is true. And I know that Sam Greenwood is a very big name. His brother won it, right? His brother had that miracle run Correct. of like three or four big blinds. That was one of the coolest victories as well. Hmm, I mean, I could technically go for both, but then we do have four out of nine, and we're starting to get a little carried away. Nah, you gotta choose one. You gotta choose one, Rod. You can't choose both. Too many people at the final table betting is not fun. <laughs> I, I think it's kind of fun. I mean, as long as I'm, I've done really well this week, okay? I have got a new strategy in Omaha Russian Cash, Nanonoko. When they turn the table orange, they put $20 extra in the center or $40. Yeah. I look at any four cards, and I'm like, those are my four cards. There's bonus money in the middle. I fully send it, and I'm running like a god. I can't lose a bonus table. I don't know what's happening. So. <laughs> uh, uh, 
I want to say before you finish, do you yeah. can you pot it with the bonus cash? Yes, no? yes. So you can okay, basically okay. open under the gun up to 49 or something. <laughs> okay, got it. So who's the bet, Roddy? You got a couple minutes left. Yeah, I've got three minutes left. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I do like your Sam Green. I know Sam Greenwood is very good. But I thought Alexa Borke played well. You know what? What if I say I only bet on one, but I just bet on both anyway because I'm Roddy? <laughs> you can bet on both. You can do whatever you want. It's probably going to be Art Papazian who takes it at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. You know what I'll do? Um, you know, 40 40. Right? Hindsight is 40 40. We'll just bet 40 on both. Boom. Sam Greenwood, 40 bucks. If he wins it, 380 in return. And let's say Boyka, 40. If he wins it, 276 in return. If I pick a winner today, I'm obviously doing good. Yuri is our best bet. Total bets plays 155. If I get anything right, I at least win 100. Roddy. And then it's just, yeah. I, I want to interrupt you. There's a bonus, a price boost, whatever, on Romashka. I'm pretty sure. You can get in on that too. You just got to hurry up and go to that GG Twitter and get the, or whatever, wherever that promotion's at. Well, I mean, if there is a promo, uh, 15.2, all right. <laughs> With a 10% yeah. price boost. All right, boom. 20 extra on Romashka. Just because if you, if you got me there, if Romashka wins it today, no, 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 Cal, I'll be forever grateful. All right, my bets are locked in. You guys at home have two minutes left to place your bets too. Nator has actually made it to quite a few of our final tables, hasn't he, Nano? He's like quietly always coming in with like a short stack, but it's still pretty fun to see him again. Yeah, um, I just remember the one where he, he had, the, I think it was him that did the 9-8 suited damage to that uh, Guillaume Nolet, I'm pretty sure. It was like way back when, like for some reason that hand really sticks in my mind despite that hand happening when there's nine people remaining at the final table. No, I remember that too because it was like our second hand of the evening and <laughs> Guillaume Nolet came in with a good stack and you know people wrap it up on Sunday night 3 a.m. Central European time 4 a.m. Like all right we made it to Tuesday and then two hands in you get bamboozled by Nadar with your queens. Uh, I think uh, it makes sense that that one sticks with you Nano. We've got one minute left and then obviously our final table betting segment is over. We didn't mention Art Papazian by the way. Are you familiar with him Nano? Yeah, I've seen I've seen him around. Um, he hasn't reached. He might have reached our final table one other time, but didn't perform very well. Um, I do think if you're looking at the bottom, it's a good bet. Um, just that the bottom is the bottom in the end, right? Like they they don't usually win. Uh, but twenty six to one, I, I do like it a lot, and he's he's a very strong player. All right, as you guys can see, a pretty spicy lineup tonight. Final table betting is now closed. If you guys got in there, I wish you all the best. Hopefully you pick one of my four horses. Yeah, we went a little crazy this week, guys, but these orange tables at Russia and Cash, they've just been treating me amazing. All right, Nano, that's it for our pre-pre-show. Let's have a little chitty chat because Nano Noko, I had an amazing week in poker, okay? Like, as you can see, I'm shining, I'm blossoming. I'm just, lo I'm loving life. It's deep run after deep run, final table after final table. 1-2 Oma, Russian cash is going fantastic. Even got a bit out of line and played some of the bigger Oma tables. Should I do it? No. Did it go well? Yeah, actually it went all right. Like, it's amazing. Poker is just the greatest thing ever. And you know what? Last Saturday, Nananoko, I found your replacement. I commentated the final table of the Omaholics mini main on this channel together with Sasha. Sasha was a little mean, but I definitely prefer her over you. Take that. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, Roddy. So you found you found my replacement finally. Well done. Uh, I didn't watch that. I didn't know that was happening. The, the PLO um, casting. I believe there's one more. Did you mention that? Yep. Uh, upcoming Saturday, guys. Last Saturday, we had the mini main, which was fun. And actually, then the next day, I played a day one of the actual main. And three of the guys that made it to the final table of the mini main, they were firing away $400 buy-ins in the actual main day one. But yes, upcoming Saturday, guys. I believe it's 7 p.m. Central European time. So 1 a.m. or 1 p.m., excuse me, on the East Coast or 11 a.m. on the West Coast, something among those lines. Uh, we'll be having another show, the main event of the Armaholics series. And I'll be casting again with Sasha, which I'm already very excited for. It's going to be fun. Well, I mean, you said she was being mean to you, man. I, mean, I kind of have, might have to watch that VOD. It sounds like it's going to be pretty funny because it's the truth. Because you're, you're probably pretty terrible at Omaha, too, I'm going to guess. 
<laughs> I mean, yes, a couple of things I said she was not totally in line with, but you know, I've been sending, we've been having a little chitty chat, and I've been sending her some of my matches or hand histories. Match history is the StarCraft term. Apologies, guys. And she's like, what the hell are you doing? You've got 73% VPIP. This is what heaven looks like for me. Where are you and how do I play with you? I'm like, chill down, Sasha. You know, I see a lot of potential in my hands. So it's been fun. It's been a proper good time. Yeah, it sounds good. Um, I do want to ask you about the Omaha tournament. So was it indeed a uh, pre-flop uh, pot limit and post-flop yep. no limit? Yep, that's, uh, that's the way that we kind of played the entire Omaholic series. I mean, I obviously played quite a few events too. I did make one or two final tables of the smaller ones, nothing too crazy. But yeah, that's uh, how it plays out. And we had a couple of pretty out of line plays, man. It was pretty funny because one guy missed like his combo draw. And I was like, well, he was betting pretty big. I was like, if he fires all in here, he gets a standing ovation. And he, he, you know, he's got like King High on the river. And he just sends it his last 16 big blinds into a 27 big blind pot. And I'm like, oh, let's go. Called the guy called UFC Poker. And I was like, standing ovation. But then he got called by top two pair. I was like, oh, well, he's out. And then I met him the next day at the table. And he's like, you know, at first I was pretty sad that I busted, but then I saw the standing ovation and I felt a lot better. And I was like, my man. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty cool. Well, hey, it's great to hear that you're, you're, you're loving poker, Roddy. I, I can hear the excitement in you. And then uh, now you get to do a little bit more poker, a little dip, no, back to No Limit Supermoons commentary, some final table betting, usually where you like to lose some money, but you know. You win somewhere else, you lose it somewhere else, as long as the, the wins are bigger than the losses, right, Roddy? Exactly. You win some, you lose some, as long as the outcome is income. No, no. <laughs> exactly. That is a great quote. All right, guys, let's go. Let's get it on. Let's take an in-depth look at the nine players that have made it to the final table of the High Roller Super Millions Week 42. And as always, we're going to kick things off with our chip leader, Adrian Mateus. He is no stranger to these final tables. Let's take a look at the beautiful profile of Adrian Mateus. As you guys can see, wow, he has played in every single one, Dan Anoko. He's our biggest fan. I mean, we have multiple biggest fans, okay? Like, he's not the only one who's played every single one. I'm pretty sure. Lena 900, did he play all of them? I, I think all like but did. one or two. All but one or two. Oh, uh, okay. But, uh, yeah, Adrian Mateus, he's been to our final tables five times. He actually hasn't had any... The third place is obviously pretty good, but the other ones haven't been so good. Sixth place, sixth place, it's not bad, but it's, it's not too great. This time, 110 big blinds. Could be a different player today. Yep, I'm actually really excited to see Adrian Mateus finally come in as a chip leader because, as you guys can see, he has five final tables, which also means that he has two finishes that were like eight or nine, something among those lines. But I remember those very well because he came in with eight, nine, ten big blinds. And you were hyping Adrian up to me, and I was like, all right, let's see. But your hands are kind of tied, of course, if you come into a final table with eight or nine big blinds. You need to get a little bit lucky. Let's take a look. And one of the hands that Adrian Mateus had on his journey to this final table. And then, I mean, it's not the most exciting hand to analyze, but the run out is pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty hilarious, right? Like this guy jams Jack Nine suited. His opponent flops the side and he's like, God damn it, right? And then he turns the, the, the straight on the turn and his, rivers, his opponent on the river is like, pair the board, pair the board, pair the board. Yes, we paired the board and the board the pot goes to the other player and you just sit there and you're just like, what's going on? What happened? <laughs> you got straight flushed, Joni Jokerman by AJ Mateos. I do have one question for you and I feel like I know what you're going to say, but this is one thing that I never truly understood from all you crushes. So Adrian Mateus just rips it, right? Open the rip, it's 11 bigs, a jack nine suited. I don't really mind it. He's kind of short. You want to pick up some blinds. Why are we calling off half of our stack with pocket sixes? Because I feel best case scenario, you're flipping. Why do you want to flip for half of your stack? Technically, in theory, if you always know you're flipping, you should be going for it. Because uh, if you think about it, the blinds, small blind and big blind, plus all the antis is an overlay. So you kind of get value on your flip, right? Like, so say if you're, you're literally a coin flip, 50-50, um, it's kind of like you're getting 55% now. You got that little extra value, the extra pot in there. The antes makes a big play. If there was no antes, you definitely would never go for it. Uh, you wouldn't be getting a nice overlay in general. Um, there's a chance even Arter was sitting out, 
maybe he was in the hand um, and there's one less player to act. It's possible. I I'm not too sure. Uh, but two sixes, is it a spicy play? Yeah, it's a bit spicy because it seems like this is pretty far into the tournament given how mm -hmm. many people are at the table, their stack sizes. Uh, but some people kind of just always go for it. Um, mainly like uh, Adamo comes to mind, right? Like he just never skips the spot. He's like, if it's, if it's a flip, we're going to create a big stack or we're just <laughs> going out now. So the main reason why we are willing to take the risk is because of the bonus money in the middle, because of the blinds and the antis. Yeah, I would say, and of course, there's a ch there's a chance he's ahead of the two sixes. Just in theory, he could, his opponent would probably shove fives, fours, threes, and deuces in the spot for this stack size and the cutoff. It would be a plush yeah. EV shove. Um, yeah, I mean, some people kind of like to take the variance. Other players would fold this spot. Uh, I'm pretty sure with two sixes, um, but yeah. it's definitely getting very close because uh, two sevens. It's it's gonna be really hard to fold, and it's almost the same hand. Yeah, that's true. All right, yeah, it's funny because I like to think of myself as a bit of a reckless YOLO baboon, but I don't like calling off with the smaller pocket pairs, man, because I'm like, well, even if I'm flipping, it's probably going to be bad, but I could also be completely dominated. Like, I don't mind open shoving with sixes, sevens, fives, because that's different. But anyway, obviously crazy run out, guys. The rest of the hand speaks for itself. Let's take a look at the man who comes in second in chips tonight. He's back again. He's been making a lot of final tables lately, as you guys can see as well. Back-to-back -back final tables. He has played in 40 editions of the High Roller Super Millions, and he comes in second in chips tonight, Jao Vieira. I'll let you do the talking from here, Nana. Yeah, you hate Jao Vieira. No, like no. he, he can never get it done. Uh, but he's shown up in our final table a lot. I think before this year, he wasn't doing well in the Super Millions. He wasn't winning yet, but from February on, like he's made multiple. February 28th, man, how many final? That's three final tables in, in one month period span, right? Um, he's consistently getting far, a top four, top five. Like it's better than getting seventh, eighth, and ninth because those ones don't pay the bills. The fourth, the plus, they, they definitely do. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but Ben CV posted his top 10 tournament MTT player list. And Jao Ver actually came up on the upper five uh, players. I'm surprised personally. I didn't expect that um, because, but you know, Ben CB he plays a lot with these guys. He's gonna have first-hand experience, and th to be fair, he makes final tables a lot, so he's probably a pretty big crusher. And his just his approach to final tables are a bit different than some of the other guys, and maybe he doesn't ship this more often. But he's clearly a consistent winner. And if Ben CB thinks he's good, and you love Ben CB. Uh, maybe there's something we don't know, Roddy. No, I mean, I, I do think it's pretty obvious Jao Vieira is good. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Mr. Jao Vieira had on his journey to like his third final table in a month. Uh, this one is actually quite out of line, mostly from Lucas. I looked at this hand and I'm like, no, no, I really wonder what you have to say about it. Is this like one of these, I just don't believe it. Like what does Lucas Reef sees? that we don't see. Like, obviously, he did flop top pair, but let's take it from there. I mean, exactly what you said. It's one of those, I I just don't believe my opponent, right? Like, because calling down here is it's quite aggressive, uh, for, for sure. I mean, I guess, you know, this is before we got to the final table. Joe Vera, he's able to pick up stacks to reach the end. Like, he's he's got to have kind of a bad image or something before the final table for him to get paid off here, because this is... A big bet on the river, right? It's ace ten. It's hard to get called on the river when you when you've got all the different pairs out there. There's trips out there, and it's a little straight out there. And Jalver actually got maximum value here. I feel like a lot of guys won't get this much value. It looks like Lucas reads, of course, when you flop top pair and the flop, uh, it's a blind versus blind spot, so he's limp. He's going to check call this kind of hand a lot. The turn he calls because you know he's got a little straight draw in the river. I guess he didn't believe his opponent when you did a pot size bet. Because usually when people do a pot size bet from multiple streets, they either got the trips or nothing. But Jalver is good enough to go for um, less than just trips. You know, yeah, he had the top two pair, but still like, it's not the easiest value bet to make. A lot of guys might be thinking, I would never get called for this size and they go a bit smaller. And Lucas Reeves leveled himself. The bet, perfect bet size from Jao. Mm -hmm. ah, absolutely, brilliant hand by Jao Vieira and Lucas Reeves, our two-time champion. 
Definitely paying off a little more than perhaps he should here. As you guys could hear, we had an alarm go off, which means that there is a free roll coming up. It's obviously posted in the chat, but uh, we're giving away 20 uh, $2.5 tickets in one of the satellites. Just head over to the free roll section, and you guys should see the free roll that starts in eight minutes, I believe it is. Password is Rotterdam with a capital R. Beautiful password. I just don't know what the next password will be. They make it so hard to figure it out over here, but password Rotterdam. If you're playing in the free roll, guys, good luck. Let's take a look at the man who comes in third in chips tonight. And I believe he was also at our final table last week. Yes, he was. As you guys can see, March 21st. So back-to-back -back final tables for this man too. Alexei Boyka, I believe born in Belarus. Uh, satellited his way in once again. Got a bit unlucky last week, if I recall correctly. I don't think he really had to go out when he went out. But it was just one of these little setup spots. I'm happy to see more of him. And this time he comes in with way more chips, Nana. It seems like a lot of people do know him and believe because he sold pretty much the majority of his action, 30%. Um, he wanted to sell 33 which and at a markup. So, you know, people know about this guy. He hasn't performed well in our Super Millions. He's got one of those reverse beautiful profiles, right? Like he's got a ninth, a ninth, and an eighth. No 100K score at minimum. Like it's... It's pretty down there. Last week, he definitely could have turned that 8th place finish into something more, uh, but he didn't want to. He wanted to just go for it against Adamo, um, and that's why he's at where he's at. Um, but, you know, he's actually probably around break-even. Uh, yeah, he's about break-even in this tournament, especially after the score, so he can definitely be a pretty big winner after this performance. If He's coming in third, uh, but he could go out in 7th or 8th, uh, knowing how he plays. Especially if he just keeps satelliting in, I mean, then he's actually doing even better than we think he's doing, because he's not in for 10k nano, he's in for one. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Alexei Boyka had, and this is actually kind of a fun one too, obviously a classic Queens against Aces, but Carter betting all three streets, and Alexei just calling him down. Do you think there is anything weird about this hand, or did both players just play it the way it should be played? I love the way um, both players played it. I actually like the smooth call of the two aces here. Um, you know, if your opponent has a big hand, you're going to get action anyways. If he's bluffing, at least you give him a chance to give you the chips. As played on the flop turn and river, it's really nothing you can do with two aces, but just be like, okay, hang yourself. And the funny <laughs> thing, it's worse for Carter Swidler, right? Because, like, as he's playing his hand, he's like, oh, yes, please give me action on this flop. It's so dry. Please give me action on this turn. It's so dry. Remember, it's still so dry. Please call me. And then he sees the two aces and is like, what the hell? Because at least when you're all in pre-flop, you can root for your two queens. Now you're just ho hoping no king, no ace, so I can still value bet my opponent. And yeah, GG. <laughs> GG it was. So let's take a look at our next player. Who I believe is good old Romashka. He's actually got an official little avatar right now. Like he doesn't have to select a random picture, but uh, he's a Russian producer slash personality. Uh, maybe we should look up what he actually does for a living, Nano. Because I have to admit, guys, we don't know it. What we do know is how he plays poker, and it's just fun. Fun with a capital F. Uh, he gave us the time of our life, I believe, on the 7th of February, where he really just turned it into one hell of a show. He could have won it, but he had a couple of little blow-ups in the middle. But fireworks with this guy. Ain't that right, Nana? Yeah, and, you know, it seems like, yeah, he's a Russian producing person. Somewhere in the entertainment industry, I'm not too sure. Uh, but, you know, he, he he's aggressive. He, he doesn't... You can tell he doesn't play professionally based on the way he plays, but like it's a good way to play. Like it's gonna put you, give yourself a chance to win. And um, you know it's funny because I think the first or second time we've seen Romash at the final table, he was playing so tight. Like you're like, oh my god, this guy is just trying to get some pay jumps, right? Then something happened on February seventh, a spark, an aha moment, and he was just crazy, right? I think he might have been the chip leader of the tournament. Like, uh, like for a lot of the tournament, we're just going nuts. Maybe even to start the final table. And he, he could have easily shipped that tournament, but he did get second place for 332k. Very fun player to watch. Uh, it's cool to see him regularly joining these and having fun. Well, if you take a look at one of the hands that Mr. Romashka had on his journey to this final table, you'll be like, yep. Yep, yep, yep. I think that's a little Romashka play right there. I mean, that flop isn't all that pretty for his sevens. But he decides to see, but that's all right. 
on the turn. He's like, well, maybe I can get him to fold now. That did not happen. Adrian Mateus stuck around after he flopped initially top two pair. Uh, Romashka gave up on the river, which I think is a wise choice, Nano, because I don't know if he really would have been able to get Adrian Mateus off the two pair that Adrian flopped. Yeah, it's a it's a very scary river card, but uh, I don't know if Mateus would fold knowing how crazy Romashka is, because you can see he knows his opponent is crazy. That's why he just calls at the top two bear on his dry port and just calls on the turn. He's like, let him just hang himself, right? Um, so it seems like these two guys got some history. Um, it seems like Mateus knows these guys like to to bluff off some chips here and there. So we'll see how Romashka approaches his final table today. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited for it. That's all I know. Let's take a look at the next player that we have in line for you guys. And that is the one and only Sam Greenwood. Uh, he has not done ultra well in the High Roller Super Millions. I know Nano, he crushes a lot of things in life. Phenomenal poker player. As you guys can see, a couple of monster scores on the top right side. The High Roller Super Millions not really working out yet for Sam Greenwood. It is his second final table. He has cashed a couple of times, but he has played 32 times. He's got to learn from his brother, Nano. Lucas Greenwood showed him how it's done. He took it down. Why is Sam Greenwood not winning a High Roller Super Millions yet? That's the thing. There's there's a variance in this game. Um, he's one of the best players in the game for sure. Yes, you're right. He hasn't been doing well in the Super Millions yet, but uh, you know he did get that sixth place finish for 123k um, within the past month, and it's starting to show up because he's now he's showing up at final tables. Uh, I think he's going to get back into green uh, real soon, maybe even today. Um, you know he's he's a big crusher and like he's he's really tough to play against. Um, he plays a little bit differently than, than some other other pros out there, uh, but I like I really like the way he plays, and he's he's played some really big tournaments in his lifetime, as you can see, and he's even played the million dollar tournament too. Well, if he runs like he runs in the hand that we are about to review, I think he can absolutely run it up tonight. Because let's take a look at one of the hands that absolutely helped Sam Greenwood on making it to his second final table in uh, roughly two months. It's always nice when your opponent bats big on the turn, you raise him, he calls off, and he's drawing dead, Nananoka. Literally drawing dead. Yeah, I'm like, he's got to have some out, right? Can he hit the queen? But no, apparently that boats up his opponent, so he does hit the card and, and loses. It's got to be nice when you're, you've got trips and your opponent has to call you with jack high, right, on the turn, because he's got a little bit left. So, uh, nice to play from Sam Greenwood. Yep. Easy hand for Sam, unfortunate one for Levinskas. <laughs> it's never a good. When you see that zero percent, that's always very... that's kind of like the walk of shame in poker, in my opinion. Like then the rest of the table is watching as well for the slow river card reveal, and you had one, you had zero percent all along. You're like, oh no, just get me out of here. You rage quit the table. Next up is the beautiful profile of Nator. Nator is still someone that we are not necessarily super familiar with. But he plays these high rollers and he plays them very frequently. He has made five final tables. He has cashed eight times. Obviously had a uh, good cash on the 27th of September. That's a little while ago, but this man kind of keeps doing it now. Yeah, he keeps coming back. Uh, he plays all the high rollers. You can see his GG book results. We're only just posting his 10K scores because, you know, if it's a 1K, he's probably not in the tournament, right? Like it's too small for this guy. So. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard for me to tell you how he plays because, you know, not too many uh, standout moments for me for him, uh, but he's got 30 big blanks. He keeps coming back. You know, in these Super Millions, we keep seeing the same guys a lot. We're going to uh, develop history with them, and I, it's, it's cool to see the same names back and back and back. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Nator had on his journey to this final table, and this is one of these hands where we were like, well... He got a little lucky, Nano. <laughs> he got a little lucky. He got it all in on the turn. Did have the nut flush throw, and obviously he had a pair of sixes. Probably thought that a six is good, an ace is good, and obviously a club should be fine. The aces and sixes were no good, Nano, but the clubs were still there, and he hit it on the river. I don't know. What do you make of this hand? It's kind of one of those plays where I feel like you like to talk about a lot, right? Like you should maybe go for a little check raise when you get hit when you big combo draws and, and put your opponent on, on a really tough spot. And I, I think you like this play a little bit, Roddy. I know you don't like being up against two jacks, but uh, you would put a <laughs> lot of pressure on like a weak king or, or, or something like this. Um, yeah. 
because this is a lot of chips that went out on turn. So even a hand like King Queen would have a lot of trouble uh, making a call down. And um, you know, usually, yeah, your ace, your six, your club will be good in this spot. It wasn't, but how often does your opponent actually have a set? Uh, it, it's really tough, to, especially with a six in your hand. Like you block pocket sixes. Uh, so, and your opponent didn't three bet Jack, so he got punished for not three betting Jack. This guy deserved it. I don't know this Georgie, but uh, there's a reason he's not at this final table because he slow played the two Jacks. <laughs> well, at least he played Jacks, which is better than we see often at our final tables. <laughs> uh, even though maybe he should have let this one go. No, you're right. I am fun I am quite quite fond of this play. Uh, like if it goes check check on the turn, it's obviously not a disaster, right? Because you gladly see a river card with your hand. But if your opponent does bet, it's like, well, let's see if I actually believe him or not. You know, maybe he's betting a queen 10 or something and he doesn't even have it yet. Maybe he's got a worse flush draw. So I like to check race, try to take it down if you can't. Instead, he was forced to call off for all his chips. But I think at that point, we're already so committed. You know, we've got so much in the middle. And normally a six should be good. An ace could be good as well, not always. But you know, you always have the clubs. You don't love it. But you're going to call off and you see you're up against the set. Well, that's when you're kind of like, oh, that's pretty silly. But then you see a beautiful green card on the river and life smiles back at you. Let's take a look at the profile of our reigning defending champion of the High Roller Super Millions. This man had some hands last week. If you guys are watching the show right now, but you didn't see our episode last week, what are you doing? You know what? Exit the live stream, go back into the VOD because you replayed some of the most phenomenal, spectacular poker that I have seen in a very long time. Got away again with the qu trip queens on the river and then somehow called uh, Micro Demo all the way down with like third or fourth pair when all he had was a pair of eights. No, no, this man played awesome. Yeah, it, I mean, he's a brilliant player. He's been to our final table many, many times. Finally shipped it, and it was crazy because he had like 2 million chips up against the 17 million chips of Michael O'Donnell and flip-flopped it to take it down. Amazing player. I I'm happy to see him. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a big winner in this tournament. He's going to be an even bigger winner today. Let's, uh, let's watch some Yuri. The Brazilian players, man, they're, they're the best. <laughs> I know you're a big fan. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Yuri had. This is a very unfortunate one for his Finnish opponent. Tens against aces, it's pretty nice when somebody raises. He just called with the tens, and then the big blind came along too, which was David Jen. You normally don't necessarily love to see that, but if you flop top set, then no, no, all of a sudden it becomes a lot easier to play your hand. Yeah, and it's also one of those hands where the post flop's pretty simple, because when you flop this strong, you can't raise the flop, just call. Your opponent bets, and he bets again on turn, just call, and your opponent bets, and you got a really strong set. And you get free chips again. He's easy hand. <laughs> this game is not all that difficult, is it? <laughs> no. You just fl flop top set every now and then, guys, and you too can have a magical run. All right, next up is our uh, second short stack of the evening. Someone we didn't really talk about too much today. Uh, he's previously known as the Button Smashing Monkey, which was a nickname that both Nana and I were quite fond of. But he now is under his real name, David Coleman. He is back. He has played in only 11 Super Millions, but made three final tables. That's pretty solid, if you ask me, Nano. <laughs> three final tables out of 11 entries. I'd sign for it. Yeah, usually when a guy only has 300k in, total, in Super Millions winning, he's not doing too well. But he's actually definitely winning with just 11 entries. Um, yeah, we don't... I remember last time we saw him on March 2nd, we were like, oh, this is the button smashing monkey, right? And then, But we didn't see too much of him because he just got an 8th place finish. Um, so I really don't know much about this player besides he sold out uh, of his 20% action to, to 6 people. Yeah, let's take a look at one of the hands that our button smashing monkey had. Uh, hopefully, obviously, you can run it up a little bit tonight because he comes in once again as a short stack. But a few pay jumps would already be awesome, or maybe just an early double, and then he could potentially take it all down. In this hand, Nanonoko, he was battling it out with the European. What do you see? Oh, well, I can see that in this spot, he you know, he goes checked around on a flop. He bets pretty big on, on the turn with the two pair, and he goes for an over bet, 1.5x shove. Him. He got called by the European. The European just did not believe that his opponent would be value shoving here for, for this sizing. He just out-leveled himself. Um, 
Yeah, I haven't seen the European at our final table in a bit. Now that I think about it, Roddy, I, I kind of miss miss him at our final table. Miss you putting money on him and losing it every single time. It's kind of like Lena 900 for you. Yeah, but yet I'm still very fond of our European. Like Lena, Lena made it personal when he busted me in the 1K deep into the tournament. You know, like that. I can't let that one slip, but I'm still a big fan of the European. It's indeed time. I know that he has been trying. He has definitely been firing away. Unfortunately, not really working out for him. But yeah, funny hand by David Corman. He flopped up in bottom pair and somehow he gets it all. That's obviously what you wish for, right? When you see this flop and you have ace deuce, you're like, how am I going to get it all? Well, he decided to check on the flop. He decided to bet on the turn and decided to overbet the river. I kind of like it. I mean, mission accomplished. I think that's all we can really say about it. And you're in the big blind, so you can represent those straight draws a lot more. Maybe you got like a 3, 4, or like 5, 6, 9, 6, 10, 9, jack, 9, like these types of hands. So, um, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You can definitely represent the draws a lot more. All right. Now we have one more profile to cover. Let's take a look at our shorter stack coming into tonight's final table. A player that we have not really spoken that much about yet. Art Papazian is what I'm going to go for. If I mispronounce it, I do apologize. He has played in six high roller super millions so far, but has never cashed. He has changed that today, made it to the final table. That's awesome. Obviously, would love to have a slightly better run than going out immediately. Comes in with 16 big blinds, though, Nano. That's, that leaves you with a little bit of room, no? Yeah, he's a high stakes cash crusher. Have I known that, I would have told you to put some money on this guy, Roddy, because like, I'm very fond of the cash game players. Their, their post flop play is excellent. With 40 big blind average stack, uh, you know, like that gives them more opportunity to play post flop, shine. Um, so, you know, if he runs up a stack, like I think we might see some pretty cool moves today. Well, let's take a look at one of the hands that Mr. Art Papazian had. Seemed to be playing at life at the bike there, right? I feel like yeah, they always use so. that. Uh, <laughs> that overlay is very recognizable. All right, this seems like it was very deep into the tournament. King 8 offsuit. This has to be a mistake, by the way. No, no, no. Go. Like, I see pocket 4s and I don't see a 4 on the flop. I'm pretty sure our graphics department made a little boo-boo here, but we'll just ignore it and tell me what you see in this hand. I think this river call the two fours is adventurous. I'm like just looking at it, I'm like, what do you beat, Alexa Boyka? <laughs> you beat the eight six that isn't two diamonds, like it's heroic. Um great value bet from Papazian going for like the smaller bet on a river and it got looked up. Well played by him. I don't know about well played for Boyka, but you know, like those fours I, what are they doing, Roddy? I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure that he's as confused as I am, that he's like, I, I have a set. Like, when I have pocket fours, I don't see a tiny pocket pair, I see a set. And then I play it like I have a set. And if your opponent calls up, he's like, well, he could have like, a, what could he have? He could have a higher set, right? Like, that's always a possibility. He could be worried about a jack-10, so you just call with bottom set, and it's like, oh, actually, I didn't have a set. I mean, that, that must have been a mistake. All right, guys, that is it uh, for our pre-show. It is time to actually start but obviously Nano and I are most excited for, and I know you guys at home as well. Live poker, let's take a look at this beautiful final table. Because we all love the purple graphics. When we see it, we know we did something right. And it seems like we can actually witness the entire seat selection process. So that's pretty fun. I guess it's time, Nanonoko, for our weekly prediction game. Because that's the only thing we haven't done yet. We did final table betting, but we did not make any predictions on who's actually going to win it today. So the floor is yours. Who's your pick? Sam Greenwood is my pick. He has, he's been doing better in the Super Millions. He's not up in it yet, but I, I know he's a big crusher. I picked him last time he failed. I'm going to pick him one more time, but if he doesn't win it this time, I'm going to be really mad, Roddy. So that's my pick to win it today. He's in the middle of the pack. I believe your pick is Jao Vera. Is that, is that right, Roddy? No, no it's not Jao Vera. He's, he's in second, though. No, he's, he's not, it's not Jao Vieira, sorry. I, I do believe that he can have a great run because I believe he's a crusher, but he's not my pick to win. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Boyka. I see a man that believes in pocket force as much as I believe in pocket force. I think Adrian Mateos is honestly the best pick, guys. He's obviously our chip leader, not just because of that, but he's a really solid player too. And he finally made it to the final table with a big stack, but 
if you're going for a slightly cooler pick, Nananoko, picking someone with a middling stack, I feel like I need to go for a slightly cooler pick too. And, and then I'll go with Alexi Boyka. All right. Well, I mean, you left Yuri in the dust there. This guy came back to you back when you love this guy. And you're just like, no, not a, I'm not on Yuri today. It's possible, but nobody has won the High Roller Super Millions back-to-back -back in 42 episodes. and it, There is something beautiful about it, because he, he was the one who denied Michael Adamo from winning this tournament four times before anybody else won it three times. It'd be very cool if he also now becomes the first player to actually win back-to-back, -back, but it's it's so difficult. Then I'm like, how do you do that? Come on. How do you win the same tournament back-to-back? -back? 10K, you look around this table... It's not like he's playing against eight no names that he can eventually start bullying. Like this is a pretty tough lineup. Yeah, I mean, I guess almost every lineup's been tough. I feel like it's only been one the lineup where it wasn't that tough. I, I said that recently, this sometime this year, right? But um, the rest have been real tough. Uh, yeah, curious. A little, I'm a little, also a little bit curious what the chip leader does because we predicted Adama to take position on the second place last week. He did not. He actually sat across the table from him. Yep. I'm curious to I, see I, what uh, Adrian does. I think he keeps his spot. I think he keeps his spot. Javiero timed out. If I'm Adrian Mateos, I keep this spot. You have position on... Uh, are you switching with Romashka? Similar. It's very similar to what uh, Adrian Mateos did, where you just kind of sit across from the big stack, yeah. have some position on the shorter stacks. Yeah, I think it's uh, something we need to think about. Yeah, the, I mean, I brought it up last week, right? And I kind of thought that this was a fishy move by me because you always told me to take position on the biggest stack. And I'm like, well, I hope Nenonoko's not watching today because uh, I kind of like to stay away from the bigger stacks. Look at Art Papazian. He's so nice. He's good luck, have fun. Oh, we've got emotes, Nenonoko. Shuffle up and deal. I'm feeling it. It's going to be a great final table. But yeah, look at the three biggest stacks we have. It's like a perfect Illuminati triangle. They're all as far away from each other as possible. Yeah, I... I think, in my opinion, I like Jalvera's seat better than, than Mateos's and, and Boyka's, right? Because, you know, Jalvera's got position on Greenwood. He's got some short stacks behind him. He across from the big stack. And Mateos, like, he might not know Boyka. Boyka's, he's wild, and you oh. don't want him to have position on you. Fireworks on, in the man? first hand. We had a limp from Art Papazian with 8-7. Uh, obviously, he has a relatively short stack. Nador is making a play on his limp. I have the feeling he made this play to limp gem, no? It's a big race of 300k. Wow. Pepe, okay, he's a cash game crusher. He doesn't know how to play these short stack spots in final table. So, you know what? He's going to need some help to, to get far in this final table after that one. If he would have just jammed, none of that would have ever happened. But... All I'm right, we have saying. Yuri opening under the gun, but look at the big blind. Adrian Mateo is waking up with queens, and a lot of the clubs are there too. But I didn't see a lot of aces, so I've got an ace on the flop kind of feeling. It doesn't matter, Roddy. You're not going to see no flop. Mm. Come on. What do you think? Mateo's just going to smooth call the two queens. He's afraid of the under the gun. He's like, yeah, let my opponent get there. Zero chance that happens. So he's going to make it like 380, 410, and Yuri's going to fold. Pretty much. What's the next hand, Roddy? Like, this hand is just pretty much over. Yep, I think you're spot on. If Yuri sees a flop, which I don't think he can, I honestly think he's going to spike the ace. But Rabbit hunt. I think he can see it. He's the only one that can yeah. rabbit hunt, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, if Yuri tilts in the next hand, we know that there was an ace on the flop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if Yuri makes a YOLO play here and just jams it because he doesn't believe the chip leader. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess possible. he's like, man, this is so soon. Why did this happen already? It looks like you're just trying to bully me. Right. Um, I'd be shocked, though. It'd just be kind of uncharacteristic of Yuri, unless he's just feeling it so much from the last week's bounty. It's under yeah. a gun versus big blind. Come on, this guy can just defend the big blind so much. Like, this looks strong. It is strong. Stop wasting your time, Bank Yuri. Uh, I, I get it, though. Because, like, if you're raising under the gun, okay, he does let it go. Like, Adrian Mateus is the big stack. We know what these big stacks like to do, Nana. They do like to bump it up. Like, let's see if you actually want to see a flop or not. I don't really mind Yuri taking his time there. I definitely don't mind him folding because uh, is it worth risking your tournament life over 30 big blinds with A7 suited? Probably not. 
He did rabbit hunt, though, and I guarantee you he's going to jam sixes here because he's pissed, Nananoko. He saw that ace on the flop. I think you're... Oh, oh wow. I was going to say, I think you're right. He This is definitely a reshoving spot from big blind versus small blind. When your opponent open jams into, unfortunately, it turns into a fold a lot of times. Just Especially if you understand ICM, and Yuri definitely does. Uh, I can't, I'd be shocked if he calls this one, Roddy. Too Me often, too. he's just flipping with two over cards. But what he's thinking about is, how often is he up against a little pair? To be fair, he's probably up against a little pair all the time. But like he's also up against the king tens, the jack tens, the queen tens suited, the ace nines, the ace eights. And against if that's the situation where you're always flipping, you don't take it. You don't take always flipping spots at final tables because your I tips agree with you. mean so much more. I know you're asking me before if the two sixes are just funny. It's yeah. like the same hand, but this is a very different spot. Like I'd be very comfortable if Adrian Mateus limps to jam. Like, yeah, okay, it's a lot it's a little much still, but I'd be totally okay with it. 24 big blinds, like whatever. Oh, Yuri is deep in the tank. Yuri is like, man, I've been looking forward to this final table. I'm looking forward to defending my crown. What the hell is this? I'm being put in tough spots in the first three minutes. But I agree with you. I think it's a fault, like even though it sucks. Let him have it. He might do this again a bit later. Oh, oh my God, goes. forget it. Let's just go for it. 26 big blinds of his stack in the middle, and he's out of the tournament first. This oh, is he's just got a one winner's out. This winner's tilt. This last he's got one tilt. out, the six of clubs, and that is not going to do it. He saw an ace on the flop in that previous hand, Nanonoko. I guarantee you. He called. He would have flopped trip aces. Wow. Well, there goes my first bet of the evening, guys. Yuri, our reigning champ, eliminated in ninth place. I agree with you. I think it's a fold, man. Like, it's... It's winner's tilt, Roddy. Like, I'm pretty sure last... If he didn't win last week, he would not be making that call. He would be like, oh, man, okay, I'm not that up that much in the Super Millions. Let me just kind of cruise and get a good performance. But, like, I'm very, very surprised. Uh... I don't know. That, he had a lot of chips. A lot of chips. There's a couple of shorties around the table too, of course, right? Like Art Papazian is even shorter than when he you started know what the it final was, table Roddy? with. Roddy? Yeah, he, ra he rabbit In hunted, the middle he... of the hand, Art Papazian was actually emojiing as he was thinking. And he was just tilted by it. Papazian got his opponent to call with two sixes and he wasn't even in the hand. Brilliant pay jump play by Art Papazian right there. This is uh, turning into quite a hand, too. David Coleman doesn't want to let go. He's got his pay jump. He has now turned his hand into an... Oh, he makes the nuts. Obviously, Adrian Mateus doesn't have a lot, though. But still feels yeah. good to make the nuts. <laughs> but yeah, he floated the King Jack out of position with the stack size. You know, it's not an easy play to make. And now he's thinking, oh, my God, I hit this hand. What do I bet? Yeah. It's hard, really hard to get called. Um, I think I'd go opponent, super small, like maybe 150. Yeah. He probably should. I don't know if he will. But the thing is, I like your logic. The reason is the queen will probably bet the turn a lot, especially with a big stack like this. So it kind of seems like your opponent is like very weak one pair at best. Maybe a turn 10, 9. Uh, but yeah, he is going for the big. Sometimes though, we, you feel... You don't feel right betting small with such a big hand, right? Like you're like, oh, what if my opponent just has a random two pair? He just calls it. I just lose so much value. But uh, yeah, you got to be thinking about it for sure. The thing is, like every big blind matters kind of to the stack of David Coleman. So we actually have three reasonable hands here, but in small blind and big blind, we have Alexei Boyka opening things up here with Queen 10. What will David Coleman do with his suited ace? The solvers like these hands, don't they? And it's like, they jam it! <laughs> Ace five suited is the number one like bluffing yeah. hand. And bye bye, David Coleman. Is this also gonna be one of the quickest final tables, Roddy? Because like, there's a big stack going out pretty quick. I don't think Greenwood is gonna be folding this. No. Uh, I so. I'd be quite shocked. It just would be very uncharacteristic of what I know of him. It'd be definitely the wrong play if he folds this, but. I, it's just not happening, Roddy. Look at this spot. Like, you're just crushing too much of a yeah. range. What Greenwood's thinking about is how loose would this guy 3-bet jam for this stack size? Because it's a lot of big blinds he's jamming right now. 26. 26? Yeah, 27, actually. You're right. Uh, the thing is, though, too. 
Nananoko, okay, I like the call. We'll talk more about it later. Let's see if Sam Greenwood can avoid the aces. Uh, so far, so good. No ace and Sam. Oh, oh there's my the ace. God. Oh, flush. We have a flush draw. Nine or a diamond. Wow. No nine or diamond. It's David Coleman instead who goes up to 2.9 million. Uh, wow. I mean, I still like the call by Sam Greenwood, Nano, because. If, he or, if his opponent did have like tens, jacks, queens, kings, or aces, would he jam Wait, there? No, he wouldn't. Hold jam. on. Is he going to go out with two nines, back to back hands? Like, it's possible if it gets folded around to him, right? Like, because Jalvera is not going to fold the. Round Jalvera, two. two Jalvera, will, Jalvera will fold. Don't worry, Nana. No, I'm kidding. I know. I know. I know. I'm kidding. I mean, it is six big blinds. He's going to go deep in the tank for this one. Two, how, how funny it would be just Greenwood came to the final table barely even played two nines two nines back to back and he's going to be out oh, that's it. a scary flop oh scary... this is my pick this is my ace pick. king or clubs for javier he needs an ace king or clubs that's an he's ace dead to me he's dead to me this sam greenwood my god what the hell he lost again nines two nines as in germany they would say Scheisse nine, you know, which means like, oh no. <laughs> All right, guys, well, it's going quick like this. Sam Greenwood out in an eighth place, two ruddy bets down the drain. This is going great, Nanonoko. We should do the final table betting live more often. We're just, we're, we are flying over here. <laughs> two ruddy bets down. My pick is already out of the tournament. Who do you have, Boyka? He's got three million yeah. chips. There's a chance Nador just busts out of the tournament, too. Uh, we know Jalvera is going to 3-bet this hand. I'm curious to see how Nador plays it with the, the 1.5 million. Yeah, this is a tricky spot. I'm actually not sure. What is your preferred play here, Nana? Probably just called because uh, Art Papazian is clearly short. I feel mm. like... It's not a good spot to jam this hand. It is definitely a profitable jam, I think, a lot of times against guys. Oh, he does it. Oh, uh, yeah. This is another quick final table, Roddy. Like, I can't believe... Come on, Jow. Don't slow roll to Nate or... You, he's, he's, not, he, you, he's not slow you, rolling. He's actually thinking okay. about it. But he will make the call. Can we find another ace this time for Nate or will it be Jow? Oh, ace or a deuce? Ace or a deuce? Ace oh. from space. No deuce, though. Deuce or a queen? Now Javier is like, deuce, deuce, deuce. <laughs> but there is no deuce, and this means that Nador will be the one to double up to 3.2 million. Well, it pays to get it in bad tonight, Nananoka. That's what I'm learning. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, that, that sucks for Javier, right? Like, I did ask you, why didn't you pick Javier? I guess I understand. You, you, you cursed them hey. at this final table or something. The official Ben CB powerhouse in the small blind as the shortest stack. Nananoko, do we send it? No. I don't I don't think Papazian knows that play, right? He's a cash game player. He's just not watching Ben CB playing with the King Six suited. He's no idea. This is actually a funny flop. As Nader flops the open ender, Romashka flops bottom pair. Yeah, it's I think with these well, you know, I like both plays. I like to check call. I like to check raise. I think you can put a lot of pressure on. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. I don't watch I like that this... so quick. I like I it. Yeah, it. He, he plays the quickest, <laughs> doesn't he? Yep. <laughs> this man played StarCraft in a previous life. I'll guarantee you that, Nananoka. <laughs> now he's kind check of a race. spot. Check race? <laughs> Pretend you have out. the check. Romashka wins a couple chippies at the expense of Nator. Yeah, it's been... Uh, it's been <laughs> we've been live for 15 minutes, Nananoko. <laughs> what is happening? I want to say I feel like today is not going to be your day in the final table betting. I mean, with Mateos... If you two of your guys out so quickly and Mateos, our chip leader, getting those extra chips, like, it's looking pretty bad for you, Roddy. Just, just saying. Thanks, Nanonoko. I did not realize that if two out of my four picks go down first, it is looking bad for me. I, I'm just happy to have you on board for that fantastic analysis. But I want to tell you that my mom has taught me that it doesn't matter how you start. 
What matters is how you finish, Nananoko. And yeah, two of our guys went down. I still have got Romashka, and I still have Alexei Boyka in the running. I'm not worried. Look, the Russian internet is down. You're going to, you've lost. Okay, he's back. You're, you're lucky. He's out. But um, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's not looking too hot. But then again, last week, it looked like a guaranteed win for Adama. We celebrated yeah. an hour early. <laughs> heads up match we congratulated yes. him i know and i'm becoming the first four-time champ <laughs> the combined did javi oh, javi is still sitting out that's kind of sad for him actually uh i think i'd be okay with a jam here from art papazian uh 12 big blinds and some change king queen suited let's get it in Roddy, you're on point. I feel like you did say you've been final tabling pretty regularly lately like seems like your game's improved huh I, I feel like that's the case as well. It does seem like we have a little uh, issue here for multiple players, but these things are often sorted out real soon. So let's not panic. Yeah, I mean, I have been listening to you, Nanonoko. I have been listening. While I sit here on the receiving end of all this verbal abuse, I have been taking notes and I've been applying it to the tables and yeah, it seems to be paying off. Yep. Um, yes, yeah, a little... I would love to see the players at least use their non-shot clock time bank just to kind of take a little bit extra time. It's kind of the right thing to do. Yep. Well, I mean, everybody has 11 minutes, so we can definitely spend it's, like 30 it's seconds. It's pretty rare for you to use all the time bank, too, we've seen, yeah. right? Like, it's you got to be just actually a slow go player. Far. And yeah, you, you need be to be slow, slow and you need to make top two, top three in the tournament. What do we do with deuces? I honestly think I would be okay with folding deuces here. Uh, yes, we got a shorter stack, but why risk it? Yeah, it's actually definitely a fold, especially with this stack size, 14 big blinds. Um, yeah, it's definitely a, a losing shove. No questions asked. I do really like how polite and mannered these guys are. Like Adrian Mateus just came back and he's like, I'm back. Let's tank, guys. Let's wait until Giovara can actually reconnect. You know, while this is happening, and this hand is not too exciting, you know what actually drove me insane, mate, is when we had the World Series of Poker online and I was watching a little bit of, like, Daniel Negranu. And it is mind-boggling to me, absolutely mind-boggling, that you absolute degenerates are playing 10K tournaments online, 20K tournaments online, on Wi-Fi, walking through the house with some random ass old laptop. And then people get upset that their stuff don't work. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, get an actual connection. Please use a cable. And from my point, like, I have a Ukrainian friend, right? As these two guys are playing a flop. But he plays tournaments all the time. He's a pro gamer. But the tournaments he participates in are not that big. So often there is like 50 bucks for first or 100 bucks for first. Do you know what he has, Nanonoko? Not one, not two, but three internet connections just in case one of them ever goes down. And he's grinding his butt off for $100 tournaments. And then you poker nerds are running around playing 10K online tournaments on Wi-Fi and getting upset it doesn't work. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I don't know why this is... Considered to be normal, like get a damn cable, guys. Come on, and a second connection. Yeah, it's it's funny because I think a lot of uh, guys do that. They they don't understand. Look, poker <laughs> players are computer experts. They just have to play poker on the internet, right? Like that. That's the thing. Like you Starcraft people understand uh, the connection. We've got disconnect protect, or you know whatever, right? We get a little bit of reconnecting time tank. <laughs> <at 20 laughs> Come you know, Starcraft, you don't get 20 seconds in the, in the middle of the... They just start, like, building more units in you. You're just sitting there collecting minerals as your base is getting destroyed. Uh, and pylons are... are what else to do? The little yeah. cannons being built in your base. Man, I kind of want to <laughs> play some Starcraft now, Roddy. It's been a <laughs> many, many years. Uh, it's still a beautiful game, but I, I find I found that insane. And he was and it was not just Daniel, it was other players too. People are like, Oh, I timed out with aces, you know, when the guy check raised me. And I'm like, You're sitting there in your kitchen in like a rented apartment in Mexico in Cancun on a Wi-Fi connection playing a 10k, and people are getting upset at disconnecting. I'm like, you guys are nuts. Like this this is not I am not a I'm not a really a tech guy either. Oh, this could be an action flop, by the way. We'll save that story, guys. TLDR, I'm upset at nerds. 
playing on a laptop on Wi-Fi. But let's talk about this end. Romashka has got queens. Adrian Medeos has top pair and nine kicker and all the back doors. Yeah, definitely a Ooh. very, very <laughs> flop. And we might lose someone or get a full double up depending on how that river plays off, right? But Romashka, bet, that's big. Again, Mateos here is thinking, please just give me a club. Please give me a 10. Please give me a 9. He doesn't want a 10 or a 9, but he doesn't know that. And oh we God. lose Romashka, Roddy. This yeah. sucks because I really like Romashka. Me too. I really wanted to see him play some more. Wow, he actually is scared. He checked. So we might not lose him. We might lose a million chips, but you know. Wow. Uh, I don't know how this plays out, but I know it's not good for Romashka. I know that I'm I'm never folding top set here. And if like he overbets River, I just call. Even though you know that I mean they could have it. Let's not forget that okay, it's half a pot. Uh, if you call here and you're wrong, you're left with 14 bigs. Look, he's not folding. He's just wondering, is there value in shoving? He, yeah. he could have lost a lot more, Roddy. I guess a semi-win? <laughs> semi-win? If you think about it? Man, that's brutal for Romashka. That's absolutely brutal. Well, he's short. Art Papazian is short. Adrian Mateus is just getting richer. Should have bet on the chip leader tonight. Damn it, Nananoko. <laughs> uh, uh, you were thinking about it, and yeah, I think yeah. I said something to you that just made you change your mind. You were just like, you well, know You what? were hyping yeah. up the middling stacks, and I'm like, all right, maybe we are hyping up the middling stacks. But we know a lot of things can still change, and let's not count out Alexei Borka, okay? One double up, and he's got more chips than Adrian Mateus if he doubles through Adrian Mateus, so it's all good. This is an easy gem, if you ask me, with King Seven. Everyone's stack has changed, but Art Papazian, right, and and Boyka. Everyone else, though, like their stacks are moving. You know, like if Nador didn't suck out that Ace Queen against the two Queens, and if Ramashka played his hand a little bit differently, we could be down to like five players already. Yes. Time flies. Javara will take it down in a slightly more conservative manner. Like, I'm okay with jamming King 7 from small blind against big blind when the big blind has 11 bigs. I don't think that's a bad play. It's not a bad play. I think a lot of people would. Um, I think his play's all right, too. Just, uh, yeah. In general, we do tend to see a lot of jams with those stack size differences just because people don't really call off too light. But maybe there's a guy like Yuri in the big blind. He's got 26 big blinds. He's got two sixes, and he's just like, let's just call. <laughs> so now you're the king seven. You're like, well, I don't know if this guy's going to call me a king eight offsuit. So Romashka just going for a base for a suit. He's like, all right, let's see some flops. I'm going to make this stack size work somehow. And he's just flopped nothing. If he rejammed, he would have took it down. Well, he flops uh, a backdoor diamond draw, and he does flop <laughs> a gut shot. He's got no stack. This is I terrible. Know. This would be a terrible float if he does up to. But this is a little bet. bit scary for Alexei Borka to bet, though, right? Because his opponent is so short. Yeah, he needs to bet ultra small, and that's what he does. Oh, Diamonds! <laughs> Romashka makes the call. And at this point, they are, I'd say, ooh, the five is actually not good, though, because now the seven could potentially play. Yeah, but it's it funny. Can you imagine the A7 high just. Just takes it down, but uh, <laughs> no, I think Boyka's gonna. He, he can't really bet again, can he? I don't think you like... can. If your opponent calls with that stack size, don't they always have a piece of that board? Wow. Yep. <laughs> the four. <laughs> but it's not over. I think if Boyka has bet this small on the turn, he's actually thinking about shoving the river. He thinks his opponent has a hand like tech Jack Ten. Queen Jack, because a two pair hand would have jammed by now. Wow. He is going to jam. Oh, wow, Boyka. Boyka. That's sick, man. Nano, that's a sick hand. Very well done. He read that so perfectly. Maybe he put yeah. him on hearts. Is that possible? Or a weak pair? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I think he put him on a weak pair a lot. Because if you think about it, with 13 big blinds, like, He's flatting the small blind. He doesn't play professionally, so he's probably still seeing some broadways and some some hands like that. Like he probably almost <laughs> always would really just get in there. <laughs> he would always jam the flop or turn with two pair, right? Or like a top pair, king queen. So that was a great read from Boyka. He's, he's a sick player. 
And now Nater is like, I hate my hand, but one big blind to pay. Uh, he folds and he would have. Oh, yeah. no. I, I was going to say, you thought the same thing, right? He had the best hand on a fold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't. Obviously, the jack 10 plays. It's interesting that Borka just flatted with the ace king, but I think that's because, you know, Romachka is short, Art Papazian is short, and it, it sucks when Adrian Mateus just bumps it up. But then again, how bad is it really when you have ace king and the chip leader is opening under the gun? Yeah, I think it's the right play. Under the gun, under the gun plus one. Like, you don't want to get it in pre flop. Yeah, like you said, there's short sex out there. Uh, yeah, I think it would be a disaster actually if you got an ace king in pre flop. So, the smooth call is definitely the right play. ICM suicide, but if you play for the win, could have been an all right move. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> you could be like Yuri too. You play for the win and you're out in ninth when you're guaranteed pay jumps if that's sex size. Alexei Borka doesn't want to let go of his ace king just yet. The board pairs on the river. Adrian Mateus got to be feeling quite all right about his jack 10, but might be a little bit confused as well about what could Alexei Borka have in this end? Yeah, it's hard for him to get called by worse with the jack 10, so I like that he's checking. And yeah. nice little win. Now everyone sees him slow play to ace king. They're like, hmm, this guy is scared. 8.8 .8 million for Adrian Mateus. He had to wait a long time to have a proper run at one of these final tables. But I feel like it's happening today. No one is even coming close to him, man. Like, I mean, David Corbin is running it up. Yeah, but he jammed in the, the, the solver hand, the ace five suited into, into what, pocket nines. Greenwood played yeah. two hands. He played pocket nines and pocket nines back to back and lost all of his chips. I mean, that, and that was my pick. My God, I cursed him, didn't I? All right. Romashka is going to go all in with his remaining five big blinds. Nador has deuces, but one of the deuces is that, as we can see, Alexei Boyka has a deuce. This would be a, a very good hand to get called by for Romashka. I mean, yeah, definitely. Yeah. If that. Deuces fold. Actually, the other two guys would have folded their hands, and that would have been a sweet move with five big blinds. Here we go. King 10 should be able to get there, right? All right. King 10 five. or a five? King 10, five, or a three? A three, <laughs> a three <laughs> counterfeit would be sick. Nah, it's over. Wow, it is over. The deuces hold. They avoid everything. And Romashka is eliminated in seventh place. Three out of the four bets are done. This is just a great final table betting segment. I'm so happy we did this live. Nananoka, you're the best. I'm going to listen to you more often. <laughs> the one time you do it too, like live, is like actually you're like the worst, right? Like you don't yeah. even get to sweat it at all. Uh, but I feel like, you know how we always say like for certain people, it's the, been the easiest final table so far? It's Adrian actually been Mateus. the easiest for Papazian. The guy's done nothing. He's gotten the shortest deck. He's got three pay jumps watching people bust. Oh, yeah, you're, you're spot on. Like, what was the min cash? He basically made 50k extra so far, correct? Next payout is 116. He's got jacked. Oh, and Nader has tens. Oh, oh, Art Papazian. He's going to run it up. He's the cash game player. He doesn't normally play the Super Millions. Um, yeah, just... He's done nothing. He's got the same stack he came to the final table with. Now he's got the dream scenario with three bust outs already happened. He's wondering what to do with the two jacks. Does he open jam? Does he go for the min race? Wasn't, wasn't that kind of the story of Yuri last week, though, as we do just jam the 10 uh, jacks? If I'm Nader, I'm calling here. Even though you don't really love it, you know you could be flipping, but 10s are still 10s. You don't fold 10s here. Nader makes the call, and he's going to receive the bad news that he's up against Jax. He needs a 10 and a 10 only. It's pretty tough, Nano. You're really tough. Oh! Or... No, it's a no, club. Clubs. We got tricked. Yeah, exactly. We got baited. Yeah. <laughs> bad card reading by us, guys. Can't have two 10s of clubs in the deck. But wasn't that the case with Yuri last week, Nanoko? Yuri was just kind of folding, 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 and then he's like... Congrats, you have the same amount of chips as you started the final table with. Now you're top three. And he's like, all right, hold my caparina. Now I'll start playing some poker. And that's when he ran it up. Yeah, they're very similar. I guess the difference is Papazin came in at the very, very bottom. But now he's got a nice stack in. 
He's got a good chance to... I told you, if this guy runs it up, he might be able to make some moves because uh, cash game players, they're they excellent post-flop players. Pre-flop's a different beast for him, but, you know, with these stack sizes. But I think... Uh, we'll see what he does here. Doesn't Does not have the backdoor hard draw. That's usually the minimum requirement. But for this bet size, it's, you got to continue in some fashion. It's, it's the tiniest bet in the world. It's not even a quarter pot. It's less. 1.1 big blind. Or 1.2, actually. Oh, the race. Look at this. It's with 6, 8, and he takes it down. Well, I did not see that one coming, Nanonoko, but I do like it. You should have put some money on the bottom guy. Yeah, much better than the other three guys you already wasted your money on. Like, you could put on less money and would have been better performer. Yes, no, no, I could have. <laughs> it's all it's all good the oma streets are waiting for me the donating days are behind me we are a collector now nanonoko it's all good <laughs> you know what's funny it's because uh you were talking about ramashka earlier and then you said russian cash i was like what's russian cash yeah. like i thought you were talking about russian cash games like these russians in the cash games are donating to you but you're talking about the the zoom the really quick games yeah the yeah, the it's the equivalent. CSA. It's the equivalent of Zoom, and on GG Poker, it's called Rush and Cash. But yeah, if you say it a little bit quicker, it sounds like Russian Cash. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> Rush and Cash. It's fun, great format, and it is indeed uh, very fast paced. And you know, GG Poker, they have this bonus feature. Like you cannot get paid for jackpot hands when you play Rush and Cash. But what they do do is they splash the pot every now and then with either 10 big blinds or 20 big blinds. And when that table turns orange, Nananoko, all the rules, all the knowledge, it goes out of the window, baby. We send it. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a, you know, I'm thinking about it a bit more. And you're saying you do this in the PLO. And it's definitely got to be better in PLO because the equities run so much closer. So you're not too far behind. But if you're going for a four deuce off soon, like a 10 big blind spiced up pot, you're probably just dusting off chips, right? Yep. But in Oma, it's not bad, mate. Like yesterday, a guy had like, he had aces, nine, eight or something. I had queen four, I don't know, nine, four. Bam. Flop two pair. It's all good. We get it in. Monster pot. 1K in a 1-2 game. All comes to me. The table's orange. It's mine. No, no, no. Okay, that's the rule. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Adrian, yeah. Adrian Mateos with a, a decent hand from the small blind, of course. King 9 offsuit, decides to raise it up. Alexei Borka wants to defend. On a flop like this, I don't think we can let go of our ace 4, right? No, because you might have the best hand. Um, you're up against a chip leader who's going to be raising some terrible garbage. You got the back doors, uh, but you could just the best hand's enough. Yep. Well, if you weren't sure you had the best hand, you're probably a little more sure now, especially after that check of Adrian Mateos. I do think betting is a little bit scary because then you can get check raised and it becomes disgusting, right? So I wouldn't actually mind a check back here or a very small bet, but I'm okay with checking. I think the standard is to check there uh, because you don't want to get check raised with this hand. And you can do some uh, some bluffs. Some chip leaders just kind of going for the bet check bet line. Um, Definitely the right play. Now I think I would have to go for a bet. It just seems so unlikely for your opponent to, to have anything that would raise at this point. Quarter pot, 33%, something like that? Yeah, I think that's the right right amount for sure. Uh, you want to get crank called by a queen, but it looks like he's just like, nah, I'm not good. I'm not falling for this. I don't want to get check raised. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame him, especially because the other guys are all shorter than what he is if he takes his spot Ooh. down. Oh, Art Papazian's got a set, guys. That's actually uh, the best hand in poker. We'll see if he can get paid or not. He's up against a better hand. It's two fives. That's a worse hand, Nanonoko. Get out of here. What? Uh, Who folds right. a set preflop? <laughs> Can you imagine Papaz? He doesn't usually want play, get play these tournaments. He's watching the stream. He's listening to us. He's like these idiots talking about pocket fours. Like they we haven't seen a flop. How can you have a set yet? See, there's no set. It's coming on the turn. No, no. it's always the four on the turn. <laughs> you we'll can't always just it. fluff it. We'll get yeah. to see it. 
Fives continue betting. David Coleman defending the big blind with King Jack. And if you flop uh, top pair on a board like this, you're definitely not unhappy. I think he might think of a race. He doesn't decide to race. He will just make the call. Seven. It's a bit scary, right? Because now all of a sudden we've got three clubs on the board. Let's see how stubborn Nader is. Nader, do you really want it or not? He started it, but can he finish it? He cannot. Hey, I'm pretty sure he had the four of clubs. Okay. I think you're so right. Pocket fours you're... don't always make a set, but they are always the best hand. Sometimes they make straights. Sometimes I'm gonna go watch the video. This is important to me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you take it from here, Nanoko. Yeah, of course. Priorities, Roddy. At least the, well, the king check is actually block betting. This is kind of a weird board to block bet, but I guess he thinks that Nader would just. He didn't want to call a bigger bet. Uh, not the standard play. I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. But he gets raised by Nator. Roddy, what's going on? I mean, it's you. It's all you now. I'm trying to figure out whether or not <laughs> Force would have won the hand. That's more important to me. But I oh, didn't have the four of clubs. Damn it! All right, I'm back, guys. That is a uh, mental play by Nator, but I don't hate it because you know that your opponent is going to struggle calling this off if he does not have a club. I kind of like it, actually, Nano. It's wild, but if there are four clubs on the board, how likely is it that he has a club? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. David Coleman... Oh! Like, see, that block bet actually cost him, right? Like, if he had, had he checked, like, maybe Nador checks, or maybe Nador bets, and you call just a pair of kings, right? But by you doing the small bet, it just doesn't look like you got... It looks like you have a king, or you got like a really tiny club or something. Eight. <laughs> Art Papazian is watching the stream. <laughs> and you remember the first hand of the final table? He was A7 offsuit in the small blind, and he limped, and Nader bumped it off. And obviously, there's a delay. So he just saw this, and he's like, You raised me with 8 5 offsuit in the first hand. And I bet that Nader is really happy that this match just came after that hand because he was just bluffing with Ace. <laughs> I love Nader. Nader is the goat. Oh, I love it. <laughs> this yeah, is yeah, great, guys. This, that's the perfect emoji you use, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is so cool because it's still in. It's like, you raised me in the first hand of the tournament with 8 5 offsuit. You're so out of line. Oh, another. Ooh. Obviously, not flush draw for Nader. Hard Papazian does flop mid pair. Yeah. Uh, we see a jack or a king of diamonds on the turn, and I guess a jack of diamonds is not possible. The king of diamonds on the turn, and. Bye bye. I would like to see uh, just a 10 of clubs on the turn to really spice it up. 10 of clubs or a 10 of space. Oh, what nice. ace. Not that fun. Yeah, it's actually kind of an action killer. Both players <laughs> are going to be a little bit cautious, I think. Nader might still bet. The only problem with betting sometimes is you get raised and now you get this bloated pot with a hand you can't fold. Um, but I like both plays. Art Papazia might actually think he has the best hand here, right? Like It is possible for him to have the best hand. It's very possible, but it's not going to be worthy of value betting. So I imagine he's going to check this hand. But uh, the trip aces on this board, you got to put your opponent on a queen or a jack a lot. Um, I'll probably go for like a half pot. I like it. And you should you know what? The guy just talked about 8-5 offsuit. So maybe he thinks you're making a move on you and you're going to get yep. paid off a little bit more often. Oh, uh, come on. That, I actually don't like that bet because... You could actually be like just dusting everything off for absolutely no reason. This is a bit over the top to me. But what you just said, Nano, I really have to feel Art Papazian is like, man, you raised me really with 8 5? And now he's like, are you doing it again? But this time, <laughs> Nator, you are so sick. <laughs> oh, I love it when the guys are having fun, even though they're playing for hundreds and thousands of dollars. This is good, man. This is everything that GG Poker was meant to be, by the way, Nano. Yeah, we really haven't seen this before, have we? Well, he's saying A7 of diamonds, which which is the hand it is. Yeah. But, like, 
you can see they're kind of like trying to get a, into each other's mind and trying to uh, go for it. The A7 of diamonds does make sense, right? With seven dudes liar. <laughs> no way. You won't believe that. A7 makes a lot of sense, right? Because there were two diamonds on the flop and obviously the aces that came were not the ace of diamonds. So. That's a good read by Art, but makes sense. Seven high is good. <laughs> That's the most chatting we've had between two players. Huh? I like it. Nice hand, nice hand. All right, what's happening in this hand? Nobody flopped anything? Ooh, no? spicy turn. What's he saying there? I can't read that. Uh, the uh, Art said, like, seven high is good, and then Nathan replied, I figured. That's why I was value betting. <laughs> 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 uh -oh. A bunch Maybe of straight draws, huh? No bets from anyone. Alexia Boyka, I feel like, has learned his lesson from last week where he decided to just battle it out with Michael Adamo and he lost relatively early. He's like, let's not do that again. You know, I saw Yuri. Yuri just folded his way into top three and then he actually decided to play some poker and ran it up and actually won the event. Maybe I should be a little more careful, a little more ICM aware. I feel like we're seeing a more conservative version of uh, Alexa Boyka today. That's, uh, probably, I bet you after he busted with that hand, he was like, did I really need to jam the 27 big blinds with whatever suited ace he had? And I think the answer was no. And he's, now that he's back, cause it's literally like one week ago, right? He's gonna remember that hand. He's like, I'm just not gonna do that again. Was like ace five suited against pocket eights, right? That's what it was. Yeah, something like that. Art flopping top pair here with his suited ace. Don't think that Adrian Mateus really wants to stick around. Like king nine is a hand where normally you see some potential, but All right, Art is a bit afraid. Does not want to bet. Chao Vera has been very quiet ever since his queens got cracked by what was it? Ace random? Ace Queen of the of Nader. But um yeah, wow, they're still checking down this Papazian. Interesting. Uh but yeah, no, I think Chao Vera at the beginning, right? Because he had a he had a nice little run. He was up to like five million chips or something, and he's like, This is my day. I'm gonna show these commentators what I'm made of. Ben CB said I'm a top five MTT player. And I want to take a look at this list. He Actually, became I was doing quiet. that, I was yeah, doing he, that he at the beginning of my show, but then I got distracted by something else you said. I'm going to find that list. At ben. I saw that people made a list. I thought it was kind of funny. He's like, list, uh, I think Fader is the one who started it, right? Like, list your top 10 MTT players, wrong answers only. Yeah, then, yeah. All right, those were some funny replies, mate. That was actually, like, I, I don't even get all the inside jokes that they were making, but I could pick up on a couple of them. And I'm like, these poker guys are pretty funny. Let's see what You won't list. be able to find the list, Roddy, because I think he put in, I only, I saw it from a YouTube point. So he made it like in a YouTube video. So I don't know if he yeah. actually typed the list out. But there's one, oh, well, pause a second. Look at this hand. He's taking advantage of Jalvera here. The eight, seven suited on point with the king eight. Adrian Mateus is looking like a very, very solid bet to win it today. <laughs> do you, how much money do you have on him? Because I remember you saying you wanted to, you're going to bet a lot on Mateus because he was the great chip leader to, to pick. You know, Sasha told me this last Saturday. So I feel like I can actually tell you this. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was going to say, you, there's one name that really stood out for me right away uh, that Ben CB said. That I think it was his first, the number 10 he, he put out. And it was, um, I forget his first, Arsini Melanov. You yeah. love that guy, yep. right? And no, he's he felt good. he was a, a top 10 player. And He's actually one of our big winners, like over up a million dollars uh, with his big scores. It's just I a saw, big pressure. I saw him sitting at a, uh, a VIP Oma table last night all by himself, two and a half K. I was like, shall I give Arsene some action? But I was like, nope. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm staying smart away. Move. <laughs> I mean, you must have been doing really good to be thinking about that. But like, I I'm glad you got some sense in your Audi. Yeah, I mean. 
You got to live a little right now and now going these COVID times. We're all locked up. We need a little bit of excitement in our lives. So, but I was like, you know what? I'll find the excitement on a different night. Adrian Mateus takes down another one up to almost 9 million chippies. David Coleman should. I honestly don't mind raising here. Like you can limp, but I actually like raising with Jack Ten in small blind. Yeah, I mean poke plays are definitely fine. It's just kind of annoying sometimes when you raise the small blind with these hands, and then you get a lot of heavy action post flop. It's not really what you want to happen. You don't want to have a big swing in stack sizes with forty big blinds if you can help it. So I think that's why often you see a bunch of limps too. And it allows you to limp some garbage. Yeah, it also allows you to lose against super random hands that I feel like Jack Ten shouldn't lose against. But oh yeah, but almost definitely. But like he's up against Javier, right? Like he's gonna get free flops more often than not. That's what I'm thinking. That is true. Very good point. And if Javier doesn't connect, he's not gonna take. He's not gonna fight back too hard. Javier will pick his spots carefully after running into a pretty bad beat here early on. I feel like everyone has been a little passive other than Adrian Mateos. And he's like, you know what? I like how this is going. I came into the final table as chip leader, but I came in with 5.5 million. And after the first hour is almost done, he's up to 8.7 million. I mean, what's not to love? Three pay jumps already. A couple strong players eliminated in the name of Yuri and obviously Sam Greenwood too. Like, could Adrian Mateos have asked for anything else other than this? No, I was just like, yeah, it's... His his biggest opponent, I feel like, was Romashka, the guy with the random factor, right? Like he's just too crazy, and he's gone. So like, what is there to worry about? Nothing. I really have the feeling that these guys are gonna try to outlast each other a little bit, which this is gonna play into his favor. But and with these that's... stack sizes, there's a lot of time, like yeah. 40, 50. There's actually a really deep stack tournament right now. These uh, final six, so. In a sense, they, they got a lot of time awaiting, so Mateos can technically chip up a little bit more. But then again, on the flip side, with these stack sizes, people aren't going to fold their big blind that much because what's the worst that can happen? I, I like the, the little dynamic we've got going on between Art Papazian and Nador. I have the feeling that uh, they're going to give us something fun today, Nananoka. We haven't seen everything yet. It's going to get better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should see them going heads up. That would be a really fun one, but that's not going to happen with Mateus' stack. Here's a little bet in the Queen 10. Oh. oh my God. I feel a little bad for Nador. I feel like he, this should have happened. Wait, you feel bad for the guy with 10 4 offsuit losing against Queen 10 yeah, suited? But his opponent gave him a free flop, so he deserves to punish him, right? I'm not following this logic. I don't feel bad for the guy with 10 for offs. I would have felt bad for Art Papazian losing against that garbage. He might still do, though, because Nader is pretty creative. <laughs> no, but he's definitely thinking about calling. Um, yeah, it's a third pop bet. Nice fold. Yep. That is a good fold indeed. Show the 10. Show the 10. <laughs> Ooh, aces for all. I hate it when the, the guy with all the chips gets aces in the big blind too. I don't think he's going to get too much here though, but so many moments where like, if you have ace queen here and I get raised by the, by the big blind big stack, I'm like, you don't have it. Like you're, you're sitting on what? Over 120 big blinds. There's no way that you got a hand better than ace queen. And then you jam it and they have aces. You're like, well, that's stupid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Kind of annoying for Ace is because, you know, he's not going to get any more action. Like, I mean, he had the small size, but I, I don't think Papazian's going to fold, is he? Like, Probably I mean, not, I, I mean he, no, I mean, I feel like he's going to fold is what I want to say. I'm sorry. The thing is, people will level them, though, into the whole, you know, you're already the richest guy. You've got the most big blinds. You're just trying to bully. People are willing to make an out-of-line play against the chip leader every now and then. In general, Mateos has usually had the hand. Um, I think the one time he did three bet bluff pre flop was against Zhao. The king eight? 
Was yeah, King eight King against eight. a seven. Yeah, but uh, he's kind of running hot. It's Mateos. Yeah. Not running too like, hot. He's just kind of been grinding smoothly. I like this as well. Small blind against big blinds. Just bump it up to three big blinds. Take it down. It's not three. It's four, actually. He's, he's going a little bit bigger against Boyka. Just trying Sorry, to guarantee I, those folds. I cannot count. You're right. Four times uh, six is 24. <laughs> but it's the right play, actually. I like the sizing up because his opponent has a bigger stack. You'll really want to discourage calls. Uh, out, you don't want to be out of position post flop. Seven nine offsuit is kind of gangster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, neither. He's like, we're not gonna sit here and let Adrian Mateus win every hand, right? We're not gonna give him that golden wall. The pocket trees will make the call, but that's not a flop you love as pocket trees, because if they don't have the king, they most often have the queen, or they had you beat in the first place. I think you got a fold here. It sucks, but. Like, even if they have Jack-10, you need to avoid a million cards. So, like, this is a horrible flop. And you don't know which one, and you don't know if he's still barreling those hands. Yeah, it's mm. little pairs. They, they do play pretty. They're really hard to play if you don't flop a set, like really hard. Every flop looks like a bad flop if it's not a set. <laughs> Unless you're playing pocket force, guys, and the set is either coming or you probably have the best set. <laughs> I had a funny moment. I was on a Discord call with my friend and I was like explaining him some different formats of poker because he's getting into poker too. And uh, he's trying, you know, he tried some no limit, tried some tournaments, tried some cash games. I was like, give Oma a shot. I was like, I love Oma, Oma cash game. And he's like, all right, I have, uh, I don't know what it was exactly, but like basically six, seven, four, four, but there is a guy who opened and the other guy raced. I'm like, just call. He's like, why? I was like, because you're going to flop. He's like, everyone's going all in. I was like, you've got force. You're calling. He's like, oh, my God, I flopped quads. I was like, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately <laughs> flopped quads on his first day of poker with pocket force. He's like, you're right. Pocket force are a monster. I was like, of course they are. <laughs> wow. I feel bad for this guy. Like, he's he's getting, le like, terrible lessons. I mean, oh, my God. He just yeah, that's straight. sick. Uh, he but did. Pocket force. <laughs> This guy's trying to learn, and you're teaching him these rules that aren't hey. even rules. Six, five, four, four, double suited. Come on, on a regular table with jackpot possibilities. That's a slam dunk call if I've ever seen one, Nenonoko. And if you disagree with me, come find me at the tables, okay? I'll flop a set of quarters against you too. <laughs> wow. So all right. So he's turned it straight. Wouldn't put my opponent on that. Wow, checking. I don't know about that. It just feels like your opponent has got a weakish hand and he's going to check back almost always. I guess on the flip side, at least you can show down you're trying to trap people, so maybe they won't value bet you later. Yeah. I think I'm with you. I think I would have bet small because, or at least half pot because I remember Teos, he probably looks at a bet of 200, 300k. We're like, well, Let's see if you actually have it, and let's see what you have. Doesn't really bother him too much. Yeah, checking, you take the risk of not getting anything for your straight, and that kind of sucks. This could be the last hand of the first hour of our final table today. It's been a pretty adventurous one where we lost three people very quickly. David Coleman is honestly the one, other than Adrian Mateus, who has perhaps been doing the best, Nanonoko. He came in with a very tiny stack, I don't know what the odds were for him to win, but they were big. I remember that, like 18 to 1, 20 to 1, something along those lines. He's running it up. He's completely back in the mix. Let's see. Nator versus Javert round two. He's, yep. His ace queen, ace queen again. <laughs> yeah. Ace queen again. I do like this play a lot. Yeah, I approve. Just... I think we've seen a lot of slow, like weak plays with these strong hands, and they always get sucked out of them every single time post or they just fold the best hand at some point. Um, do you think Jao calls with the 10 9 of diamonds? He's got position, he's got a big stack. I would like to see him call, but I don't think he calls. I'd like to see him call. I think, but the revenge call. call, the revenge call, you got to do it because of that. 
No, Javier is looking at the clock. He's like last hand before the break. Oh, it makes the call. Oh, oh my, my god. god. <laughs> All right. What does Nader do here, though, Nano? This is what I want to hear from you. What is the correct play here for Nader? 10% pot, 90k. <laughs> Bet real tiny, feel like you're obligated to bet. He's oh, gonna put a small bet out there, but it's still gonna. I want to see him check the turn though. Uh, I actually feel see. like he bet too big here. It is quite big for how strong you smashed it because it means yeah. way more likely your opponent has nothing. <laughs> oh and my Jalbera god! has been eliminated from the tournament. Easy though, Nader. Easy. All right. No, let's let's don't so, do something silly here, right? Like I, yes, over. the check from heaven. I love that check, Nenonoko. I love it. He should have folded the ten nine suited pre flop. Now he's out yeah. in sixth place. Man, what place did he come in? Third or so? Joe second. Second, 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 mate. Second. He just cannot catch a break. I feel like Joe Varick just can never get a very deep run. Yeah, Vera is wondering what he should bet with his 10 high flush. Uh, obviously, he has no odds. Would have been fun if it was the 8 of diamonds. So at least we had a sweat. <laughs> it's still pretty fun, though. Like, Oh, well, there's the 8. He needed an 8 of diamonds to roll off to save himself with the 10 yeah. man suited. It's gone. Well, Nader, but since Nader checked the turn, and did call jamming. relatively quick. You think he's just jamming here? Nader's thinking if... Well, what Nader's actually thinking is maybe his opponent has an ace-10, an ace-jack, and just side checks back the river. He might he might want to just stop him from doing that by just jamming himself. But he does check. And um, I I'm ready Jao to go on might... break with one less player. I don't know about that. Do you think that Jao Vieira always bombs it here? Oh, for sure. He's up against yep. ace king a lot, ace jack, ace ten. Pocket queens, ace queen. It, yeah, but you gotta remember ace queen doesn't always bet this flop for a third pot, right? So you gotta discount a lot. That is true. That is true. He's jamming. He's just he's slow tanking. Not slow rolling, but he's tanking because he's thinking like, oh, I'm trying to make my opponent look like I'm moving off like two kings or something. Uh just no chance. Just, just no chance he, he checks this hand. Why'd you even call preflop? You know what I mean? Like, you can't check this hand. You got to get value when you make hands with small oh, the, stack to pot okay. ratio. One argument for checking this hand. If you win the pot, you're second in chips regardless. If you bet and you're wrong, you're out. Roddy, get the about, hell out of here. Oh, my God. You okay. need a five-minute break. What? This is the worst right. logic I've ever heard in my life. You'll be second in Second place, no matter what. Are you are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding. I mean, I don't think. <laughs> I I do have a feeling that if, if anyone checks back this river, ah, oh, okay. But now he he leaves himself in a super awkward spot where he's gonna get raised. And I think the moment you get raised here, you know you're no good. Ah, oh, this is so disgusting. Because now you know you're no good. Yeah, I mean, but it's four hundred k. I don't. Here's it. I don't think my opponent is bluffing me. You just gotta ask yourself: Is there a chance he's value betting worse? And you know what? If I see 660k into 2.3 million bet, that's what 30% less than 30% pot. I think the answer is there's a chance. Maybe my opponent's just like, you know what? I'm not letting him get away with the ace jack here. I've got ace king. He just yeah. jams and uh... bye bye. Jao Vieira makes the call and will receive the bad news that Nador flopped it. Jao Vieira is out, unfortunately, in sixth place, came in second in chips. That hand took longer than most other tournaments that already start right now. But now we have our actual five-minute break. We have a couple of promo video guys for you prepared. And Nano and I will be back in four minutes and 40 seconds. See you soon. You think this is a game? You think this is a game? Well, actually it is. And you can join me for my $5,000 showdown on GG Poker. And watch me on their YouTube channel Tuesday, March 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern time or 11 p.m. Gimit, Geneva, you know, Greenwich Mean Time. That's the GMT. And uh, I will see you there, guys. What is it, four o'clock? 
East Coast, uh, four o'clock, four o'clock West Coast, seven o'clock East Coast, wherever you are, figure it out and be there. Hello, everybody. Daniel Granu here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations, you know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's going to fold that, right? That's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flopped the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry. You don't even have to lift a finger. First, Simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop out window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future. So keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my. Michael Otamo is the best. Welcome back everyone to the second hour of the High Roller Super Millions, our weekly 10K over at GG Poker, where we are down to five players after Javier got very unlucky in the last hand before the break. Then Anoko is getting his uh, morning coffee. Poor Nano, it's always 6 a.m. for him, so we can give him a break. Did you get your coffee, Nano? Yeah, I didn't realize how much time has passed. I mean, that hand took so long, the last one. I felt like the break was so short. <laughs> <laughs> we're back mate we're back and we're down to five it's been a very smooth sailing for adrian mateus not only did he extend his chip lead over the rest of the table but i feel like he got rid of a couple of very tough opponents already 
it's safe to say you didn't lose any another final table better of that last one though like it was yeah. it was Jalbert, but it kind of sucks for him right he came in in second place out in sixth place and two brutal hands so i feel like he just got done by the ace queen nador just is loving that hand against that opponent specifically brutal wow king five that kind of came out of nowhere I like it though. It's gonna work. I doubt Papazian's gonna jam Ace Ten. He's not. So it is gonna work. Why do you like it? Why? Why King Five here? Uh, I mean, I, I'll tell you this. In general, um, we've seen this play a lot. Usually, you actually see it from the Ace Five, Ace Four offsuits. You've noticed, right? It's kind of like. Not that doesn't play well post flop, but you got a blocker to a strong hand. I guess the king five is like very similar, but it's not quite as good. Um, but you actually see it often with those hands for the, the, the super regs. I like this one from Adrian Mateus. He's like, well, you're big, but I'm bigger. Do you really want to play for all the marbles with multiple short stacks around the table? Let this be a lesson, Nader. There's only one captain at this table, and that's me. Adrian Mateus is playing really good today. I'm actually very happy for him that he can finally show us what he's made of because all these other times he came in with eight or ninth stack or seventh stack. This time he finally has a proper stack, and I think he's really showing us uh, what a solid tournament player he is. Pocket fours. Come on, speech time. I mean, I don't even need to hype this up. Adrian Mateus is in trouble, mate. Like, let that be clear. The only question is, will there be an ace on the flop and will Adrian Mateus go broke? <laughs> well, Papazian's got ace seven of diamonds. A hand that's very playable multi-way. Likely going to get to close the action. I don't think he'd expect Nate or just go crazy. So I like the call and I think the 9-6 suited. It's in yeah. great shape, actually, against these hands. You know, I used to play in a commerce casino in LA as the flop is queen, queen, deuce with two spades, though. I used to play in commerce casino in LA and I was a, uh, I was a dude there that I became friends with. His name was uh, Jesus. He's really funny. He had a little speech for every line he had. And whenever he's like, nine, six, two, that's my girlfriend's favorite hand. I got to play it. And I'm like, oh, my God, this guy's such a clown. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Nader makes the flush. I mean, it's my girlfriend says, so gotta play. It's a favorite <laughs> band. <laughs> well, I'll give you this. Pocket fours was the best hand on the flop. And it's still beating the ace three offsuit if it was just going to go heads up. Oh! It was the best hand. It is the best hand. It's always the best hand, Nananoko. How many weeks do I need to cast with you to tell you that pocket fours always make a set? Wow. I did not expect that, Roddy. Unfortunately for him, though, his opponents just got a... They, all, they got strong hands in in by the, uh, the hand ranking chart, but they're not strong hands on this board, right? Like, no. Someone's got a straight, someone's got a flush, but it's a four flush and a paired board. Yep, it's uh, very unlucky. Imagine if that is the four of hearts though. Mm -hmm. then, then all of a sudden things changed quite a bit. You know, it was actually Nador's mistake. I'm just thinking, like, how did this pocket fours even get to see a river card? Nador did not bet after it checked around. I don't know why he, he didn't bet. Um, well, Nador just lets it go immediately. I, I'm with you. I, I mean, sure, there are four players, but come on, mate. If you have a flush, you have a flush. You probably want to bet it. And it's a vulnerable one too, where the four spade can roll off. Or another card pairing the board. You don't want that. So Adrian Mateus can never call here, right? Just... Well, he's hand reading right now, and his hand reading is thinking, look, if you had a flush, if you had trip queens or something, like what did you have bet by now? Would you bet this big without the the ace of spades? Like it's probably thinking probably not because there's four people in the pot he might trick himself into a call like ni nice fold but uh 
<laughs> you don't want to see the king's pants. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Alex and Borg is like, I know you guys are the little family pod, but I'm still here too, by the way. I had the king of spades. Like, thanks, Alexi. We're very happy that you shared that with all of us. Uh, funny hand. Yeah, Nader probably a little missed opportunity there. I, I, I think it makes sense that Adrian falls, so he just doesn't beat anything. Like, even a slow played queen, let's not forget about that now. It's not just about the four spades, but imagine if David Coleman was sitting on a queen all along, waiting for people to put some money in, and on the river, he makes a boat too, right? Hey, that's impossible, man. You can't have a queen and then make a and make a boat with the deuce five. We explained the queen deuce, the queen five, and the queen four. That is Come true, on, actually. Roddy. The that, pocket that fours, true. though. If they're a watcher of this show and they listen to Roddy, it's always yeah, in play. Because pocket fours rest... always see five cards. Yeah, the rest of the board was very low. That's correct. No, that doesn't make any sense. Ignore everything I just said, guys. That was stupid. I'm, oh, I'm ignoring a lot of the things you say. Yeah. I just ah, pretend I you. listen to Roddy. <laughs> Damn it. I gave you another opportunity to just make fun of me for weeks. I don't know what I was thinking there. For some reason, in my mind, there was a double paired board, but obviously it wasn't. So forgive me. That's why I thought with a queen you make a boat, but yeah, it wasn't. I'm an idiot. Cool. Cool. On to the next one. I think the King 10 is going to call here. He's got the King of Spades. He might have the best hand. It's a tiny bet. I mean, we haven't seen much of Coleman in the past Super Millions, but uh, today I'm, I'm liking the way he's playing. Well, he is calling off with King-10, like you suggested. He's still behind, though. And the Jack does not help him at all. Nader, though. Nader has been playing pretty fun poker tonight. Queen on the river. Does David Coleman feel the urge? Too bad, because he should know that King High is most likely not good here. Yeah, with the queen and jack running off, that's not what you want to see. But then again, if your opponent hit a queen or jack, well, they're obviously not going to fold on this board texture. So it's kind of like, what does betting do? I feel like you just lose both ways. You lose when you check, you lose when you bet. It just seems yeah. cut the losses. You know what I noticed when I was uh, trying to get my new friend, you know, to play some hands of poker? is that people that are new to poker have the urgency to try to win every hand. And I'm like, mate, like you can't win every hand. It's okay, you know, let a couple of... He's like, yeah, but I could bluff. I was like, you don't have to win every hand. Nader fires a big bet and probably thinks that he just took it down with a bluff, but we know that's not the case. Ace, queen, queen, jack, jack, 10. Time for Alexei Borka to pick up some chips, though. It's my my last horse in the running. Come on, Alexei. It's time to step it up, mate. Uh, how is he going to come? He's got 2.5 million chips. Mateus has got 9 million. I guess the question is how far up can he go up in the ladder, if, if at all? He's got the best hand right now. Well, Boyka, uh, he plays a pretty mean game. Like, he... I really, I really like that play he made against Ramoshka earlier, the triple barrel. That was like some sick hand reading with the A7 on the King Queen 10. Like that's a hard one to triple. We do have a gutter ball here with Queen Jack. Obviously, if you hit it, you don't necessarily hit the nuts, but you're also not super worried about your opponent having 10 8 or pocket tens. He's actually going for the check race. I don't hate that play, Nano. On this board, I really don't hate it. It seems like Papazian's got a, a pretty big check raise game because he earlier he check raised like eight six with the little gut shot and a paired board. He's going for a check oh. raise and hits the straight. Must be nice. Must be nice indeed. Now, if you do get called that quickly, you might be a tiny bit concerned, but at the end of the day, that's the card that you were looking for. So you can't be super concerned. Exactly. He's just thinking about okay. I hope my opponent has like the seven, eight, the jack, ten, something to pay off. But ace, queen on this board, it'd be adventurous to call this turn. Not yep. even a good draw. And let's not forget that Art Papazian was in the big blind. So if anyone was going to have an eight, he could very well have an eight. And he doesn't even beat a ten. Nice fold. No. Solid fold there. 
Art Papazian probably wishing that he got a little more, but hey, he ran up his stack to 2 million now for the first time tonight. Don't forget, guys, he came into this final table with only 800k chips. Back then, that was 16 big blinds. His stack currently, well, close to uh, 28, 29 bigs. It's not bad at all. Did Nader just get a walk with pocket tents? Poor guy. It's only a poor guy if you get a walk with like two aces or jacks plus two tens. You're like, I mean, it's it's not the greatest, but it's not like it's not like oh my god, I missed so much value. You know, you're not trying to trying to get play for stacks of two tens with these ones. You know, my uh, my new buddy, he he was very fond of the um, speed races. I know that you've never really played them, but it's the ten big blind tournament. They're really fun. And literally in the second hand, on his big blind, he got aces. He's like, oh, my God, I've got aces, I've got aces. Like, cool. He's like, I got a walk. Like, what the hell is this? I was like, that's actually pretty unlucky in a speed race to make because people jam pretty much everything, especially from the small blind. He's like, so sick. I can't believe it. I was like, well, there's many more to come, mate. There's many more to come. <laughs> Adrian Mateus has a gut shot and obviously he has a pair too, but you don't really love your pair here with three hearts on the board. But it's still something. He's thinking about just betting because he doesn't want to let a random heart get a free card. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of would have liked to see Nader possibly have bet that turn himself. It's a really small bet. I think Nader will tag along with the King of Hearts. Yeah. It it's not like, yeah, I, I kind of like, I like this place. Like, his opponent looks weak as hell, and you're super deep. Yep. Adrian Mateus with a real decision for the first time tonight, I almost feel like, because everything up to this point, like, yeah, he's been playing good, and he made a couple of cool pre-flop moves, but this is an actual proper post-flop decision. What does he do with a pair of sevens and the gutter ball? He lets it go. And Alexei Boyka is like, I had the ace. <laughs> <laughs> he loves not sure if, by the way, that's his favorite, apparently. A great play from Nador. Like, I think Mateos is... These people, if they're small bets, have been opening up up to get bluffed by Nator every single time. Because David Coleman did that little block bet, and he got bluffed. Like, Nador's playing... I, I like him the way he's playing yeah. today. Like, he he's just... He's not... He, take, he chooses his spots here and there, but, like, he chooses them really well. 17 to 1 before this final table started for Nador to win it. All of a sudden, that's looking like a mighty fine bet as he's sitting at 60 or 6 million chips. A little short of, I don't know, like 70, 80 bigs. TLDR, he's got a lot of chips to work with. Trying to get a little adventurous. You're like, you know what? I'll open Jack 10. And then you see this flop. And you're like, not even one diamond? <laughs> I was hoping for two, if not three, but not even one, really, guys? Still a little something. It's worth a little bet here and there. And uh, like Coleman, he, he, what is he got? King five is nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, he drilled the nine the last time he was uh, floating. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Yep. Oh, I think this That's... is all in situation, Roddy. Your man, so. your last bet is on the line here. He's going to be out, and you're going to have no more sweats. No, I'm very happy. I'm very happy that you said he's going to be out because that means that Alexei Boyka is about to double. I think you're right, man. I think this is a run open. David Coleman probably just bumps it up, and then Ace Queen shoves and Jack's call, right? Exactly. Um. Especially if you know that David Coleman 3-bet the King-5 off here earlier, how can you not ship in Ace-Queen? Ace-Queen has been the end of the evening so far, though. If Ace-Queen can beat Pocket-Queens, why the hell would it not be able to beat Pocket-Jacks over here in Nananoko? I mean, it is a coin flip, but I mean, it's your last bet. It just doesn't seem likely. For you, it's been real bad. You've lost half the field. Only four people have been gone. Ace or queen? Yeah, the flop sad. is no good for Alexei Boyka. Well, we bye pick bye. up some extra outs. 
Ace, queen, or a four on the river is what we are looking for. That, that is an ace. Oh that is the God, ace Roddy. from space. No, 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 go. If you think you scare me by saying that all my bets are that the moment you say someone is out, I know that I'm set, okay? I've had, I don't exaggerate, but I've had five conversations this week over at GG Poker where people are like, the Nanonoka curse is powerful. And I'm like, you're damn right, it's powerful. <laughs> They're loving it. And you just prove it time and time again. Nah, Bo Boyka got luck. I don't know how you got bailed out there. This guy, he's also your he's also your pick to win. Why didn't we just seal it? Could have been over. <laughs> All right, Papazian limps here with the King Six offsuit. Nader is sitting on King Jack. Don't forget that these two have already built up a little bit of history here. So, all right. All right, Papazian doesn't want any of it and just lets it go. I'm happy that we're still with five, even though for David Coleman, it's going to be very difficult to run it up. Probably jamming Jack 10 here, right? If we are playing uh, a little less than seven big blinds, six big blinds and some change, I, I will take jam. it down. Because usually when you jam this, you're like, please just just give me those blinds. And you feel so good when you take this one down for your flop. Look at this. Look at this increase in stack. Started the hand with six. Now we have, uh, what? Eight? Eight yeah. big blinds and some shit. Is king and a7. If art opens, Adrian Mateus does like to three bet from the small blind. We've seen that a couple of times today. That would open the door for Art Papazion to just get it all in. But Adrian doesn't take the bait this time. Well done. It's going to have to fight the king nine. And it's straight draw on straight draw action. But the thing is, the 10 would actually be the worst card in the deck for your man. Boy, I, I, I'm aware of that, Nanonoko. I'm aware <laughs> that the 10 would be a very bad card. Yeah, he might try and see it. <laughs> Let's hope he doesn't. Let's hope he doesn't. We don't have to chase God of Balls. Well, you know what? There's a chance he wins the spot if he goes check, check on a turn. But for Papazian's hand, I would like to see him bet again at the Ace King. Draw mm -hmm. to the nuts, two overs. Um, a Jack would have a lot of trouble calling again. But that's Definitely the right like play. It. Nice. Yeah, I like that bet a lot too. Even if you don't have a pair yet, like you did pick up some extra outs there with every 10 probably being good. Maybe the 10 of spades being a bit complicated, but I like it a lot. Well done. I think I feel like this is going to be a proper uh, battle tonight, Nana. You think so? Like, well, with who? Like. Nador, Adrian, Alexei, and if Art Papazion doubles up just one more time, he's absolutely in the mix too. I think these boys are going to make it dirty. Look at this. I mean, I, I kind of expected this three bet to come because he did it early with the King X suit against Zhao, and you know, he's kind of been attacking Nador a bit in position. Nicely done. Indeed. Adrian back to 8.5 million. If he opens here, King-9 will jam, and then he's probably forced to call it off. This could be a big moment for David Coleman. I don't think uh, Coleman's going to jam King-9. You, That's what you want to see when you see the whole cards, but I'd be shocked if he had went with that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. There is a better moment. Ooh! Ooh. Huh. Top pair versus the straight, but obviously three clubs on this board should slow down the action a little. Another seven be fun. A seven or a king on the turn? The king would be the worst card. Yeah, club. So it's going to be a boring hand now. We're just going to try and shout down from both guys. That's what I imagine. What did David Coleman fold again? Like, I know it was king nine, but what was this suit? Yeah, king. Who cares which suit it was? Come on, Rod. He cares. It's not he pocket cares. fours. That's true. I'm sure Boyka is going to show us his whole cards if he's holding one of those clubs. Like, he does it every single time. <laughs> I hear my alarm go off, which means it's time for the final free roll of the night. I actually don't know what the password is, guys. The password is GGTV. If you guys want to participate in a little free roll, you guys can just go ahead and head over to the free roll section in the GG client. Password GGTV. One word, all caps. Good luck. Have fun, guys. What is Adrian Mateus thinking about here, Nanoko? He's trying to pick off like a 
a pair of fours or a pair of threes are turning their hand into a bluff, like an ace four or ace three, which would. I guess the problem is I don't think they would choose this tiny sizing that often. So I would love to see them fold. If anything, this smells like value to me. Yeah, no, I agree. That's why I, I, I would run. I don't know if Art Papazian even thinks it's value, though. But <laughs> no clubs in uh, in the hand of Adrian Mateo, so Art Papazian will take it down. 2.6 million for him now. Keep a close eye on him. King Queen against Ace Nine suited under the gun versus Big Blind. No seven deuce game here, guys. No bonus rules if you take down a pot with seven deuce offset. I feel like if there's someone that's gonna do it, it's GG to add some like seven deuce tables or something where like if you play it and show it, you get some bonus from everyone's stack. I mean, it'd be a really fun way to spice up the tables, I'll tell you that. I am uh, actually looking forward to the day that they give us a chance to play five card PLO. I have never played one hand of five card PLO in my life. Apparently you're dying loves... for it. I can feel the energy. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I think I'd be all right with it. I, I do want to give it a shot. I've heard a lot of great stories about it. It seems like it's very popular in live games these days. Uh, I don't know. Have you ever played five card PLO? No, I've, I have no idea how the strategy changes or whatever. But like, I can barely look at four cards. But then like, if you give it to me in live, you know how many times I have to play with my whole cards face up because it's just going to be way too confusing for me. Whoa. I'd love to give it a shot. And I'm sure that GG will give it to us eventually because they gave everything to us. Probably just waiting for the game to grow a little more in popularity because you don't really want to launch something that's not necessarily popular, right? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, what about that? Uh, they have a new series coming around. Yes. The, the, the Spring Festival, Roddy, is that right? Yep, that is correct. Starting on April 4th. And it also, Deadmau is involved. I don't know how, I don't know if you noticed, by the way, but in the old days, and you probably know as Aider, or Aider, Nader does Aider. three bet here, the ace jack half suit from the small blind. You know, in the early days, Elki was always traveling around with these little Deadmau yeah. uh, figurines. Uh, and he always put them on his card. Those were his card protectors. But yeah, Deadmau is part of the graphic. I don't know what that means, guys, but I do know that we have a massive spring series uh, starting soon. April 4th, obviously going to be small buy-ins, massive buy-ins, big field. You guys can see it in the bottom left. I love the graphics. It, it makes you feel happy. It makes you want to sign up. It makes you want to run good. That's definitely what those colors give to me. But yeah, I'm excited for it, and you guys will absolutely see me play quite a few because uh, I'm running hot right now. Like the emote, no, 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 go. Ah, that's me running hot. <laughs> that's a pretty good, pretty good one. But uh, I think the nice thing about the the spring series is they got that low, medium, high. Yep. So like, if you're like a high roller, obviously you go straight to the top playing the 10Ks, 1Ks, 2Ks every single day, right? But then they got like the the low binds, right? For for the guys who watch our stream with us, Roddy, we know there's a lot of guys out there. They can test their skills, but it costs uh, way, way less to play. Um, Absolutely. I, like one ten. But the fun, yep. Yeah, often there is like, let's say the small ones are basically anything between five bucks and maybe 15 or 20. Hmm. And then obviously the medium ones is often between, let's say, 80 and 200, uh, maybe 300 max. And then the high rollers often start at 500 and go all the way up to 1K. I mean, you guys can see it all yourself in the lobby. There's going to be a million tournaments. But the fun thing is that there's all leaderboards as well, right? So there's leaderboards for the small buy-ins, the medium oh. buy-ins, and the high buy-ins. And that's really cool too. So you can really test yourself even if you don't have the bankroll that other people do at least you can do it out with people that play the same tournaments as you do any idea what you win on, on the leaderboard is it like a trophy money or, or what, what's going on maybe both why why not both i mean I there's definitely cool. money yeah trophy would be cool but they don't keep track of all these scores just to send someone a trophy and that's it <laughs> i'm sure there is a nice little cash bonus involved if there is one thing that GG is pretty good at, I have noticed, is that they like giving away money, like daily logins, GG Care, Bad Beat tournaments, leaderboards every single day for Omaha, regular Russian cash, no limit Russian cash, even for all in or fold if you play 100 hands. So there will definitely be prices involved. Uh oh, Ooh. is this it for David Coleman? 
think it might be. It just might feel obligated with this stack size. Uh, oh! Okay, it's a double. Easy peasy. Well, if Can't you lose. say that, then Anoko, I can see the king of clubs. Uh, no, not the king of clubs. The king of <laughs> hearts, the king of spades. All right, okay. only two outs. It's looking real good. We only need to avoid the king of hearts and the king of spades, and we do. Don't want to say Coleman is back in it, but hey, that's 11 big blinds in a bit. Not bad. Definitely something to go with. Um, but you know what? Uh, you, you mentioned it, GG Care. So the other day I opened the lobby and I was just looking at the VIP tables and then I saw there was a, a 100, 200 game, 20k buy-in, I believe, uh, and, and Limitless was playing and then it, it was a, a, a flush on the turn and his opponent that tiny, he raises and he jams the river, he's got the, uh, the six high flush, right, like he's feeling really good, the other guy's got the queen high flush and then it goes... Some graphic pops up says GG Care plus six thousand chips or something stupid, and then like I'm just thinking this guy just lost twenty thousand dollars, and you're giving him some GG Care. I uh, I know how it feels, Nano. I've seen those graphics too. The animation is marvelous. It's kind of like an angel coming down from the skies, and then it lands. It's like GG Care. This is your new stack. Yeah, it's a. Uh... You don't want to see it. I say it often. It's fun that they did. Uh, they did it. It's fun that you know they are giving away thirty thousand dollars every single day. So it's definitely still something for people. But you're doing a lot better if you're not part of the GG Care tournament, or you just really suck and you lose all your money without getting bad beats and setups and coolness. But you don't want to be in that tournament with too many buy-ins, Nanoko. That's or too big of a chip stack, I should say. You know that what? That means I would you've been running very bad. Every time someone wins some GG care chips, I would boot do the haha -ha emoji like right after. No, Just... no, no, that, that's mean, <laughs> mate. That's that crosses lines, okay? In the friendly emoji meta that we have, that crosses a lot of lines. <laughs> I mean, if you think people need to be more rude, in my opinion, in these games, you know, we, we got to we got to speak our mind with the emojis. If you think that that's like could be tilting. The Daniel dance, mate. The Daniel dance is more tilting. I actually had a really sick hand just yesterday in uh, one two Oma. You start obviously with 100 big blinds, right? If you want to, so $200. Ran my stack up to 600. And I don't know the exact details of the hand, but I had aces, flopped the nuts, turn. I still had the nuts. The river, the board pairs with sixes. And I potted. The guy checks, I pot, and he bombs it because he actually started the hand with 1200. And I'm like, I literally see no other hand here other than he actually has pocket sixes. But I was like, I've got aces here. Like, I'm not going to fold the final 250 with the second nut. So I call it's a $1,200 pot in a 1-2 game, you know, 600 big blinds. Yeah, obviously, he's got That's quad sixes. And I was like, Daniel, da -da 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 -da. then I'm like, <laughs> okay, nuts, nuts, second nuts, lose second nuts against nuts. And I've got Daniel dancing in my face. Life dealt, but you yeah, must have got happens. a lot of GG care chips in, right? Because you lost a yeah. lot more. Congrats, turned, Roddy. Ha ha. Turned it. I actually got a message too. And, you know, I turned it into thirty-seven dollars, so it helps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little pair on pair action between the two big, bigger stacks here, um, but not too much going on. Just one bet went in on the flop. This could have been proper fireworks. If they were shorter, right? Like if they had playing like 30 big blinds effective or lower, like this could easily be all in at some point. It's still a big He's... hand for Alexei to win though. It's a very big one for him. Like those 1.1 million chips mean a lot. And Adrian Mateas dips below 8 million. Alexei now really kind of finding a connection to the two biggest stacks at this table. Uh, didn't I say he was out? My God, <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did, Nananaka. Yes, you did. It's like your stack size is so small, so you feel obligated to call the deuce five suited, but then your hand's also kind of bad. I don't know and really then, what's the right play with this hand, but um, this and is. And then what the you flop get. is king nine nine, <laughs> no spade, and you're like, oh. <laughs> I don't mind calling there. See, uh, just if you flop he's anything. Like a, he's always just showing people that his cards. He's not even in the hand for fun. Yeah. It must be time. a fun player. Like, only fun players do that, right? Like, Boyka's actually not good. He just shows his cards. 
And on, on Twitch, we say Kappa. You know Kappa, right? <laughs> I know Kappa. Okay, good. My favorite. <laughs> it's a classic. Should be an easy open for Adrian. Don't think he's going to find a lot of resistance here. I mean, Nader with the suited king, he closes the action. We'll probably toss in that one extra big blind and see a flop. Yeah, I feel like when Nator has a lot of chips like this, he kind of he kind of slows down a little bit more. You know, he's not he's not going to do anything crazy, but he'll still play his hands properly. King four suit, he's got a little flush draw. I think he probably would check call to flop. It's a bit too deep to kind of go crazy. I wouldn't mind him if he check raised, but generally speaking, you'll see check call. Well, that ace of diamonds is no good to Nader. I'm going to close my door real quick, Nano. I get tilted when my door is open. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, man. Oh, my God. Y you feel better? Okay? Absolutely. The door is closed? You could have did that earlier, Roddy. My God. I know. You but I mean, me. somebody... I, no, no, no. Talk about somebody had to be here when we came back from the break to welcome the viewers. And since you were late, I couldn't close my door. That's what it was, Nananoka. I'm sure that was it. All right, Coleman's got the ace 10, but I guess he gets a little takedown, huh? That's a nice one. Yeah, I think that's a little too much for Jack 8. I think you're always kind of tempted, but if it was suited, would you ever pay off there, Nana? Nah, definitely not. Still too much. Yeah, I always what? think about like when I double up the short stack, I like, I don't know. I, you don't need to win the tournament right away. You got a big stack, 8 million. People are just going to fold to you later. Just keep that situation around. Mm -hmm. Seven do suited in this small blind, and Adrian Mateus bumps it up. If Alexei Boyka can find a call here or a race. He should be able to take it down. He does find a call, and he flops the flush draw. This is one of these hands where sometimes it's better to wave the white flag immediately, right? You try to take it down with seven deuce. Just don't don't make it any worse than it already is. Let him bet. Ooh. Oh, nice trap. I'm surprised Mateos isn't firing, though. Like, there's nah. still 700k in the middle, and he hasn't put out a single bet yet. Like, he can easily get a better hand to fold. Maybe he's waiting for a river to do it? I, I don't mind, man. I, I Sometimes it's better to just let it go. Wave the white flag. That's not the board. You could be drawing so dead. I, I, don't I mean, you're, you're drawing dead on almost any flop, right? <laughs> no, you can make a little pair. You can have a couple draws going. He had nothing going there. Adrian is going to open this one, and Alexei hasn't done a whole lot of tree betting tonight. But if we don't tree bet the jacks here, I don't know what we're doing. Yeah, he's definitely going to three bet this, make it like seven hundred k or something. He's going to make it a 740. lot. Seven forty. Seven forty. What? No, nope, just call. Flops a boat though. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't want. It's funny when you say flop a boat and you don't see any connection. It's like it's pretty hard to do. But he did. He did manage to flop a boat, Roddy. Uh, but, you know, maybe it was that last week thing where Boyka's like, I'm not going to dust off my chips. I'm, I'm going to keep things small. And obviously, uh, we do have David Coleman. You know it, You know what would be sick, by the way? A jack. Mm. Imagine how sick a jack would be. The case jack on the river. Then I think Adrian Mateus fully doubles Boyka, no? Yeah, it'd be pretty bad. It'd be pretty bad. <laughs> 1.1 million. What are you doing, Mateos? Ow. He's really trying to put pressure on his opponent, but I feel like this is just unnecessary big. Would you always just call here, or do you think there's an argument to raise? I don't think there's an argument to raising, really. It just, you wouldn't play any of your hands this by raising really like if you had a nine you would just call if you had two eights or you would just call like raising doesn't make any sense that's so bad for adrian mateus that's a strong hand on the board nananoko that is a very strong hand on the board 
Yeah, I think he's just going to take the... You know, Mateo's actually chops a decent yeah. amount. Because he's up against yeah, of eights, course. sevens, and sixes. No, of course. Like, you you almost always chop here. You look at this board and you're like, I'm going to go all in. Ah, oh, he doesn't. He doesn't take the bait. Well done by Adrian. That could have been bad, man. Because there are people there, you Nano, know, that could go out of line. And be like, I don't believe you have quads, but... Let's see if you're willing to call off because I could have a 10 too, right? That could be a 10. That's sick. And look at the stack sizes, Rowdy. Your guy, I said he was out, is in with almost a chip lead. The moment you said he was out, I knew I was doing good. Don't worry. <laughs> Everything is alive for you, right? The, the, where did, who did I pick to win it? Where the hell is my guy at? Shit. Mm -hmm. Good old Sam Greenwood. That was a that was an adventurous pick, though. I was like, all right, here we go. Nana Nuko is going to pick Adrian Mateos, who's obviously a very good player. Comes in as a chip leader. It's going to be hard for me to outdo him in our little prediction game. I you went last for Sam week. Greenwood. What happened last yeah. week? I picked Adamo, and he was going to win the tournament. We congratulate him. He did not win the tournament. That was a freaking curse. That was a real curse. Yeah. Like, I, I still can't believe it. For the first time tonight, Alexei Boyka is now our chip leader. Pretty Boyka's uh, performances in the past have actually been pretty poor. He hasn't played the Super Millions that much, but he got like a ninth, a ninth, an eighth. Yep. So this is a real performance today. King eight suited for our short stack, David Coleman. He's going to rip it in. It's very similar. Adrian Mateus again with... Uh... A jack. This time a slightly better jack, but not good enough to call off those extra eight, nine big blinds. And you also don't want to really start bleeding heavily, right, as Mateus. You were cruising. It looked like your tournament. You're up to nine million. You don't all of a sudden want to start splashing around. Yeah, I agree. I was saying, what did I say at the very beginning? I was talking about the seat draw, and I was like, I feel like Mateus doesn't know this LXI boycott that much, because I... I don't really like his seat selection. Like Boyka had a lot of chips. And I know that we know from last week, right? Like Boyka's gonna just go for it. And if he runs up some chips, like Yeah, that's a bad seat selection for my opinion for, for Mateos. He could have picked a different one. Mm -hmm. Alexei will win another one after he flopped up there against the opening of Nator. Art of Papazian's been a little quiet. I think Art is looking at David Coleman. It's like, it's time for you to go, mate. Obviously, a, a top five finish pays $151,000, but this is kind of where the pay jumps truly get massive. We've been here time and time again. Look at Alexei Boyka. How crazy do you want to get Nader? Now, Nader doesn't really back down from a fight. But uh, this is always fun to see, right? Someone has been very quiet for an hour and a half. You give him some chips, Nananoko, and they are a brand new player. Yeah, I think Nate Hoare feel like he's been getting three bet a little bit too much against Mateos, right? He's like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna see some flops. But look at this flop. It's actually a reasonable flop for Nate Hoare to continue, but obviously a monster flop for Boyka. It's a great hand, a great hand to be up against to multi barrel it off his opponent. Next payout is $196,000. As Alexei Boyka fires half pot here. Hmm. Eight it's, big it's quite a big bet. It's going to be hard to continue the ace deuce without a heart on the flop. I think a heart on a flop, it's a mandatory call. Without it, it's kind of like, mm, fine, just you got it, you got it. Yeah, because let's not forget if the four rolls off, it could get a little dicey too. Because then there are still some random hands that could beat you if Alexei did get out of line pre-flop. All right, Nador does wake up with kings this time. And Alexei Boyka has another three bet hand, but you don't really want to keep doing this over and over again. So I think he will, though. Okay, he's going to no. call here. He's just like, I'm still going to play this hand, but you're right. I just three bet this hand with a flop. Let's see oh. a flop. And this is a flop that can change people's lives, Rowdy. This Top is set. everything. NFT. This is going to bet. Like, uh, three big blind bet here by Nader. Alexei Borka. I don't think there's a reason for him to race. Like, I know exactly. you can, but I would like to just see him call. 
Oh my god! There is the Queen of Diamonds, and Alexei Boyka turns the nuts. Now, Nader knows that he no longer has the nuts, but he does have an absolute monster. Can obviously still win, of course, if the board pairs. How much, Nananoko? How much? What's the magic number here? I would bet, like, yeah, I, I, it's a little bit small for me, but I do like that he doesn't size too big because sometimes Nader has a queen, and you wait, don't want wait. those hands to fold, obviously, with your hand. Uh, nice river card, but Nador, is, he's just going to lose chips. It seems like he's worried about the flush, and I like the way he's played it. He's checked the turn. They're too deep. You don't want to bust with David Coleman with a micro stack because that's pretty much a free 40k pay jump just coming at some point. So, yeah. Now, if you're Alexei Boyka, how greedy do we get? Like, I know you can say, like, ah, oh, you can bomb it, but then if he folds, it does suck. Like, I think going for the I guaranteed one point. Two million is pretty sweet. At, at, at least, yeah, but I, I would go closer to pot. It just seems on this board texture, my opponent is so... He's already got a strong hair, like two pair. Yeah, it's going big. Um, Or he's got a hand like King Jack, and that's not going to call. Queen Jack, they're not going to call. So just go for the max value. I, I like the sizing, though. I said 1.2 million, right? And it's basically that. Nador makes the call with his set of kings. And we'll receive the disgusting news that the Kings are no good as Boyka now extends his lead over the rest of the table. <laughs> and he hits him with the sorry. I don't know if you can really appreciate that at the final table of a 10K if you're Nader, who has played really good poker tonight. Well done, man. I mean, like, he, he could have lost a lot more, obviously, in that hand, but... uh Aw. Yeah, oh, nice hand. Uh, but <laughs> just... What the happened? How does your guy have 9.6 million? This is the year, Roddy. You're winning at the tables. You're picking final. This is not the first guy you've picked to win the tournament this year. And you've got final table betting. Like, Roddy, you're you're the main guy now. They don't need me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I could replace you with Sasha every Tuesday evening, I'll, I'm all for it. No, no, no. <laughs> No, I wouldn't trade you in for the world, Nano. No matter how free binds I will get, you're my, you, you will always be my main guy. You know, Sasha, if he's, she's playing this game, she's going to be combining two people's hands trying to yeah. talk about <laughs> poker, right? Like she's, she's like, oh, four clubs in one hand. That's not good. <laughs> That's true. All right, just going to open things up here with the king nine of clubs. Let's see what Adrian Mateus does with his suited queen jack. We'll also make the call. And now maybe even Alexei Borka looks at Jack-3 and is like, well, one big blind to play for six and a half, and he flops. Not best, mm. but does flop top pair. Wow, that's actually a, a reasonable hand for both players. Um, but I do kind of expect this pot to kind of be a smaller medium one where there's like one or two bets going in and we just try to show it down because these kickers are pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh spicy. Mate. How did we get Papazian involved in his hand, right? Like, it looked like he had no business in his hand on his flop. And now, all of a sudden, he's the one that's really interested. This is funny. All three of them probably didn't have too much interest at first. Uh, I mean, Adrian Mateus probably looked at the flop and it's like, this is my pot. But now, Alexei Boyka is not going anywhere. And I have the feeling that he's going to spike the three of hearts on the river, Nananoka. The stingling sensation. <laughs> Three of hearts? Four. I'm thinking yeah. the four of spades. But maybe Papazin just scoops his king ball it. What if he just bombs it now? <laughs> yeah, the deuce rolls off. I'm going to represent those pocket deuces. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, we were completely wrong. The river is a nine of diamonds just to give Papazin the feeling that he's got a little piece of it all. You should know it's not good enough. If you're Adrian Mateus and you bet 400k in a 700k pot and both people call, you start getting a little worried, Nananoko. You're like, hmm, how good is yeah. Queen Jack really here? It's it's hard to get called by worse, so I yeah. like this check around. And actually a sizable pot for Mateus. He is back. I don't think that he really thought he had the best hand there. If any of the other two players would have bet on the river, I think they would have taken it down, right? Whether it's Alexei Borka or Art Papazian. Because nobody yeah. had a hand strong enough to really call off a river bet there. 
Yeah, I agree. I think the thing is, uh, they were just so their hand is so strong already. Like it just wins too often. They wouldn't be betting those hands. But uh, I think definitely you're right on that. Cole managed to see a flop, and he's flopped. He's flopped the best. He's good at playing these four or five big blind stacks. Yep. Should be an easy all in, right? Just out of the gates. No need to check. Just all in. I would check this one because no. of how strong it is. And my no. opponent is almost always going to put me in for my last three and a half big blinds. No, 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 no. Get out of here with check. this logic. <laughs> I'll check for sure. Like, what? Okay, the king high calls anyway. So he's just like, we'll just pretend it's all in pre-flop. Oh, oh, no. I mean, not much he could really could have done better there, David Coleman, that is. He got it in real good. But it's Art Papazian who spikes the king on the turn, and that is going to do it, guys. We're down to four. David Coleman walks away with $151,000. Man, Art Papazian and Nader. The two guys who came in, uh, well, Art came in ninth place, but even Nader came in like seventh or sixth, actually, it was. Uh, well done by them. Very well done. What's well, a pretty big score, though, for, for Coleman? Much better performance today. Uh, I'd be pretty happy. 150k score. Yeah. Could be worse. Came into the final table, 18 chips, 23 big blinds, hang in there for a long time. And on top of that, Nananoko, he got it in good. And I think that matters too. Not once, but twice, right? When he lost all his chips, he got jacks. So, oh, eight, by the way. Alexei Boyka making a straight on the river. Yeah. Um, go like half pot. I don't know. Third pot. Just try to get crying called by something. Yeah, I bet 280 here. 280 or 310, something like that. Seems like a boy cub bet for sure. Nah, times two by 64. Yep. Well, Nader can't really do much here. Nader is now a short stack, of course, guys. Only 1.8 million left. Nananoka will be able to tell you guys that that is 18 big blinds at this point because the big blind is 100k. <laughs> It's only going to last for 17 more hands, and I'm I'm in the darkness. <laughs> You're already sweating. It's like that meme of the guy who's like... <laughs> what do we do with King 5? We make the call and flop best. Boyka is flying right now, man. Boyka is just flying. I mean, why well, can't you see easy chips? Just throw a little bet here. Gotta protect your hand, get a little value from some ace highs. I think ace high is very likely. See a check back on this flop. I really like it. And I don't think there's anything that Nader can really do here. Well, oh or... no, that's a terrible call for. Or... Actually, it doesn't it's matter. Right... No, it's a great card. It's a great card for Nader. Sorry. Card. <laughs> he counterfeited. Yeah. But actually, yep. quite good. He's not that scared of the king. He's going to value better himself, I think. Yeah, this is a fantastic card for Nader. This is sick. He's actually going to get it all, I think. He's going to get at least 700k, in my opinion. That's sick. The queen plays. Boyka checks. And now Nader is wondering, what can I bet that will get called? He wants it all. Six spots for Boyka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty sick. Yeah, bye bye. Makes makes the call. Nador doubles up. Well done there by Nador. Obviously, very fortunate river for him. And it's the one card that Boyka really didn't want to see. You got max value too, Nador. I think a lot of guys just bet like seven, eight hundred k or five hundred k, and mm -hmm. obviously they would get called. But uh, he just went for it all and got. Paid off really quickly. Nice. What what I like about going for it all is that it kind of looks like a bluff, right? It looks like a guy mm -hmm. is steaming and missed maybe an ace jack, an ace queen, just bombs it. And if you have yeah. a call, like if you have a king, you got a call. Oh, I like this by Art Papazian. He's fighting back against Adrian Mateus. He's like, you've been bullying us long enough, mate. Get out of here. Uh oh. Yeah. Ooh. A lot of like, king action, huh? King Jack is always a bit tricky to play, I feel. Okay, he falls. Huh? Seems like Art Papazian feels the same. Nader just found some success with King Queen on the river. Let's see if he can do that one more time.
That's a pretty sick river in this previous hand. I know you Boy, got super trolled. You got super tricked, right? You're like, oh wow, what a terrible card. This guy just got two paired into into uh, top pair and actually had the best hand all along. Look at Borka, just opening 6-4 suited under the gun. He wants to be the chip leader, he wants to be the captain. Adrian Mateus with the Doyle Bronson, we'll let it go. Well, okay. Just like that, I feel like we just came back from a break, but guys, apparently that was one hour of poker, which means it is time for our second break. Uh, we have four players left, and we'll see you guys in a couple of minutes after these promo and highlight videos. You think this is a game? You think this is a game? Well, actually it is. And you can join me for my $5,000 showdown on GG Poker. And watch me on their YouTube channel Tuesday, March 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern time or 11 p.m. Gumit, Geneva, you know, Greenwich Mean Time. That's the GMT. And uh, I will see you there, guys. What is it? Four o'clock East Coast, uh, four o'clock four West Coast, seven o'clock East Coast, wherever you are. Figure it out and be there. Hello, everybody. Daniel Granu here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations. You know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus Kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's going to fold that, right? That's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. Flop the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see, in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry, you don't even have to lift a finger. First, simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop out window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future, so keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.
Welcome back, everyone, to our number three of the High Roller Super Millions final table, week 42. It's been 42 weeks in a row that Nano and I have been covering these tables on the Tuesday evening. Well, Wednesday morning for Nano. And it's been a lot of fun. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. The first hour, we often show it on both Twitch and Facebook. But in hour number two, everything moves over to YouTube. And of course, you guys will see more uh, live poker action on this channel on Saturday where Sasha and I will be commentating the final table of the Omaholics main event. I'm really excited for it. Massive payouts for that one. Omaha is fun, man. It's a lot of cards, Nenonoko. It's a lot of cards. Yeah, and apparently there's like a special thing happening after our show sometime. I don't know if you saw, Roddy, about Russell Peters. Did you see that one? Uh, the little highlight. I did not see it because I was on a break, but I know that that is happening. Okay, well, this in our chat, you can go ahead and read about, but there's a special one. Russell Peters, he's a he's a comedian. I've actually watched this gig before. I think you'll find it on Netflix or something like that. But uh, he's apparently he's playing some poker. I, I Everyone's playing poker now, huh? <laughs> That's awesome. I know a while ago, Lewis Hamilton actually played uh, a couple of hands and a couple of tunies here and there over at GG. I think it's really cool. I am. Uh, I mean, I'm a bit of a Max Verstappen fan. I don't know if you follow Formula One or not, but... I do kind of admire Lewis too, because he's just like one of the all-time goats, maybe the all-time goat. Uh, so yeah, it's super fun. It's really cool to see a couple of these big-time celebs playing some poker. Yeah, for sure. And um, I think I saw a little bit of the commercial during. Uh, yeah, he was talking to Dan in the ground. He was talking about like, oh, who, who are you watching playing? Okay, wait, hold on. What's going on here? Did but tails just value called off? Nice value bet from Queen Five there, huh? Well, third pair. <laughs> it's uh, every big blind matters at this point, right? Even though we've got 84, every big blind that Boyka takes away from Mateos is one that uh, later on he has to worry about less if it potentially gets heads up between these two, which it's kind of starting to look like. As he takes yeah, another I mean, one down. It's kind of like these other two guys are trying to outlast each other. I'm, I'm not sure who's going to succeed in that one. Uh, but you know, I. If I'm Papazi, if I'm Nader, I'm just I'm gonna feel pretty good about this tournament anyways. Feel like they got a, a lot of pay jumps for for their stack size to start off. Absolutely. I mean, especially Art Papazion. He came in as the shortest of them all with nine big blights. The payout for him to win if you did final table betting was something like twenty-seven to one, actually. It's on the year webcam. <laughs> twenty-seven to one, Nanoko. Yeah. He might get adventurous here with his fives. He is going to race. Let's see what Nader does with his suited ace. He obviously doesn't want to give any chips to Art Papazion, the guy he's trying to outlast. Tricky spot. Mm. He's going to go for the three bet. What do we do with the fives? Will Art Papazion jam or not? Probably not, I don't think. Uh... I could be wrong. Yeah. It's a big one for Nader. Obviously, Art losing chips, him gaining chips is the best case scenario if you want to make top three. I feel like we have two separate battles going on right now, right? Adrian Mateus is battling Alexei Boyka, and then Art Papazian or Papazian is battling Nader. Yeah. Whoa. Boyka has just really stepped out of up, line. Huh? Out of line. What are what are these out of line plays here with Queen Deuce offsuit? Oh. King Nine makes the call. And haven't we seen this before? And <laughs> this time it's all jacks. Yeah, it was the nine nine nine. And Mateos was the one bluffing out. But now it's reverse. It's another full house type board. And King it's harder for the King Nine to be calling down here, but it's the best hand right now on the flop. We're off the turn. Can we bet again? I think we can. Belarusian spirit is strong with this man. They do not raise quitters in Belarus, Nananoko. I can tell you that much. So Boyka's probably thinking, okay, this guy limp called preflop. Probably means he's either got a jack or nothing. Doesn't have a jack. We're not gonna yeah. people. We're not gonna put people on quads. Small blind. That's what I'm saying. Is if it's a jack or, or not much, you should be betting more often, right? Like, cause it's so hard to have quad jack with one card, but uh, he gives up. Nice pot for the king nine. I would have liked to see a second bet there. 
I, I, I don't know. Oh, ace 10 suited and ace queen offsuit. With these stack sizes and the way they've been playing, I don't really expect the ace queen to do anything but just call, but I don't know. He might surprise me um, and go for a three bet, but. But yeah, I'm not sure. I think he will. I think he will three bet because I don't think he necessarily thinks that Adrian Mateos is sitting on okay. a hand as strong as Ace 10 suited. So he does bump it up because if he just calls, then Art Papazian probably comes along and then all of a sudden you're playing a three way pot with Ace Queen offset. No, I agree. It's just that we've seen him smooth call two jacks earlier. So it's just kind of surprised that uh, now he's opting to, to three bet this one. But I guess things are a little bit different. He's flopped. Nothing. He still has got the best hand. He's going to go for like a quarter pot, third yeah. pot. Adrian Mateus also flopped absolutely nothing, so Ace Queen will take it down. If there is one spade on that board, then it becomes so much more tempting to continue, right? You've got the backdoor straight draws, the backdoor flush draw, and you still have position. So then if your opponent checks to you on the turn, yeah. well done by Alexei. Retakes the lead. Nador. Remember, the very first hand, what happened? The 8-5 offsuit out of the line. So I don't think Papazian's going to be folding this 10-8 suit. He's going to at least see a flop here. Yep. Unfortunately for him, he's going up against a hand that's very difficult to beat. And, well, on this board, it becomes almost impossible. He's going to need some run and runner magic because Nader will not go anywhere. He's just going to let it go. Well done. Nader has really uh, separated himself right now from Art. Even if Art Papazian doubles up, Nader still has more chips than Art. Art is better off um, letting other people bust each other out. He's really good at watching people bust out. He's not good at <laughs> dealing the blows himself, though. It's, it's huh. tough. That's, a, that's an odd compliment to give someone. It's like, you're really good at not doing anything. It's like, come on, Nananoka, don't do him dirty like that. <laughs> No, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's a great player. Like, I love seeing the cash game guys act. And he's actually been making some pretty cool moves. Just that no big swings in his chip stack. No. Yeah, but let's not forget that he came in the final table with 16 bigs. <laughs> he came in with 800k chips. So he has still doubled his stack at this point. I mean, last week we had Yuri who came into the final table with 1.6 million, chipped down to 1.2 million, but secured a top three finish and then ran it off to win it all. <laughs> hmm. I feel like these two big stacks are going to go to war. I mean, like, you don't, you see these hands, you don't really see war too often, but these two guys seem how, somehow make pots bigger than they should be. And it's the queen five, but the jack 10 might see some turns. I don't know. Do you like the casino game, War? I used to like that game, actually. <laughs> I was, like, uh, I would, like a lot way back when I would go to casino, and that's the game like I would go to. Like, okay, let's just see. It's, it's a good game. I don't know. Have you ever played it? <laughs> yes. And I have a friend in Seattle. His name is Jeff. And he actually, you kind of remind me of him because you two are a bit similar in a way. And he loves war, man. Like he would always like we've met in Vegas a couple of times when he used to live in America. And he's like, let's play war. I was like, this is the dumbest game ever, but sure. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> yeah, it's and then you're you're trying to oh look at the jack on Ooh. the turn, but you're like trying to predict the cards. Like, it's gonna be a big card, it's gonna be a small yeah. card, let's go big, let's go small. <laughs> that is a spicy turn. Because Alexei obviously makes top pair, but Adrian Mateas now has a pair and a flush draw. I wouldn't mind the raise here, Nenonoko. Even though it's a bit out of line, I know that we're both very deep. We can just call. But I also think just trying to happening. take it down. It's not happening. Oh. Gonna... The reason is he doesn't want to... He has so much equity, and he don't want to lose that and bust before this, these other guys. Because he's got 60-something big blinds, right? We can't be losing that stack right now. I know. I know, Nanonoko. But we also want to start off with a good clean hit on the chip lead of Alexei Borka, no? If you can take I'm, it down. I'm not saying it's river. the wrong play, because I know there's someone out there that would do it, his, and he got second place last week, right? That, that <laughs> Adamo would have did it. But not, yeah. not these guys. Not the normies out there. Well, now all of a sudden, Adrian Mateus is forced to let it go because his hand looked good on the turn. It doesn't look all that good on the river anymore. Ooh. Mm. I think 
Okay, I was going to say, I think these two other guys are going to go to war, but it looks like it's just going to be Boyka going for the sweet three, Brett. Yep. Our Papazian probably thought that this is his hand to at least win some chippies. Maybe get to a flip, and now it's like, ugh, Queen Jack all of a sudden doesn't look all that good anymore. When Nader opens, and Alexei Boyka three bets, and now there's nothing you can really do, I think, with ace four offsuit. With Art Papazian being that short and Anoko, what can we ever do here? Yeah, we can fold. That's. <laughs> I would go straight to the muck. I'd. Uh... Yeah, no, I don't think there's much to discuss, really. Uh... Just let it go, Nate. Or what are we doing a four bet to like 1.5 million and just throw <laughs> away it? Like, no. I think he was thinking about it, mate. I think he was thinking about it. Great hand for Alexei Boyka, who now cracks the 10 million chip barrier for the first time tonight. And even though Adrian Mateus looked like he was smooth sailing to victory at one point, the moment that Nananoko said that Alexei Boyka was eliminated from the tournament, everything got changed. Those are the words, the only words I really wanted to hear when it came to my final bet of the night. This is it, guys. Alexei Boyka is out when he's got a 50% chance of winning a monster pot. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about some final table betting again. All right. So do you, how much did you put down? What, what What's going on here? I actually have to open the client, mate. I have no idea. But if you can well, don't open the client, items. you might actually spoil some shit or something. No, I, I can. Oh, actually, you're right. Yeah, good point. No, no, I definitely don't want to open this tournament lobby. You're right. Uh, I'm not going to open the client. I'll let you know afterwards. I don't think the bet on Alexei Borka was that big. Maybe at it was the very, 50? You were split, you're, you're splitting between him and Sam Greenwood at the very end. Oh, 40-40. I went 40-40. Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what good, we did. That's a good size bet then. Yeah, 480 for him to take it down. I think he was the biggest stack of the three of the four guys you had, so you wouldn't get as much. Maybe like a six or seven. Oh no, you're right. Like it's just seven times four, so it would be two hundred eighty dollars. But it would still be a hundred and something win. Like I think I committed around one fifty five. So if he takes it down, a little hundred dollar profit. We'll play we'll some speed, speed racers with that or whatever. Exactly. Some There's always a... you can play some uh, spring festival lows. Yeah. No, 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 no. My bank was covered for spring series. Okay. I've been crushing, mate. Crushing. <laughs> you know, there is a tournament that I really love. It's the 126 Turbo Deep Stack. It starts right. around this time. I think it started 20 minutes ago. What is it? Did I miss anything? No, right? No. Oh. I no. thought you said, like, hold on. I was like, what? What? I don't see, I don't see anything here. But I no, love I... the 126 Turbo Deep Stack. And it has actually a lot of familiar faces. Like, Alexei Barkov loves that tournament. And even Arthur is playing it all the time. Don't ask me why, but Arthur is just firing away. But I kid you not, Nanonoko, three days in a row, I final table the 126 Turbo, which has an entry field of, like, 250, 300 people sometimes. It's impressive. Yes. And one bullet, two bullets, one bullet. I kid you not. Three day, three, uh, I didn't take but, it down though. But but what place are you getting? Are you getting ninth, ninth, and eighth, or what? What are you doing? Nah, <laughs> eighth place, a seventh place, <laughs> and a fifth place. But <laughs> oh, I see. No wonder you cut out that part of the story, Roddy. Okay, I'm on to you. I'm on to you. Hey man, I was just proud of my final tables. Okay, mate. It's a fun twenty. It's actually one of my favorites. Yeah, hopefully they have uh, one of those special spring festival editions for you then. That would be sure that, that's do. like that's definitely your tournament then. If if well, I mean not gonna win it, but you'll get like seven. You know what's also an amazing tournament it's for the viewers out there? It's like every day around seven p.m. Central European time, so one p.m. on the East Coast. They they have the Bounty Hunter Daily Main. It's a fifty-two dollar event, and on the Sundays, I mean, you know, I actually want to ask you about this. As Boyka gems from the small blind, but Art cannot call. Why is Sunday the poker day? Like, why is the entire world in love with poker on Sunday? But why not Saturday? Like Saturday makes more sense to me than Sunday. Why Sunday? Poker players don't go to church. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I, I think the thing is, um, someone just. Well, you know, it makes a little bit more sense. It's the weekend, but a lot of guys go out on Saturday. So they want to the, figure of the week, two weekend days, you're more likely to get more people on the Sunday than the Saturday. Maybe that's the logic. 
But it started a long time ago, right? Like some poker site, probably Stars, they made the Sunday million, and it just mm-hmm. caught yeah. on. Like everyone just like, okay, well, Sunday's the day for the big days. Um, but see. it makes more sense because Saturdays you would go out, and you know you probably don't want to spend your time playing some poker or whatever. But there is a counter argument to that, and that is that if you are run very deep, if you have to work on Monday, you don't want to play Sunday uh, late night tournaments, and then they go till five a.m. and you got to go to work the next day. On Saturday, you can play till five a.m. and still sleep on Sunday. Yeah, I definitely I understand that logic. But maybe the counter counter argument is that if you make it deep. It, you might miss work, and that's okay because you just paid for more <laughs> than that one day's of work. All right, all right, fair enough. Anyway, where I was going with it is that the Bounty Hunter Main is a fun tour, and it often has a lot of entries. But on Sunday, they actually max out. There are 5,000 entries, like that's the max that Gigi says. Really? And they max out on the Sunday, 5,000 entries, and an epic run, man, like last Sunday. I think I made it to like the final 80 or some, or final 120 Uh-oh. or something. Stop it. Look at this. That's a call. That's a call by Alexei Boyka for sure, right? A hundred percent. That is a call. Slam dunk call. Our short stack. Art Papazian puts his tournament live on the line. He's got some outs. <laughs> Still. Oh, he's there got we a go. lot of outs. Nice double up. Easy well, peasy. He's, he's not there yet, Nananoka. He's now he's fair. there. All right. All right. Now he's there. Yeah. I mean, he's still short. Like 14 or 15-ish bigs, but it's a good one. I like jamming 7-6 if you're short. Like, yeah, you might get called, but if you get called, you could be doing all right. You know, you might be... You finally you might need found some... someone who, do, who does the play you want to make, right? Like, because I've never seen anyone shove that hand, but, uh, you know, I guess he was so short, anything looks good. Yeah. You don't really want to wait another orbit, because if you then double, you're going to have to double again two orbits later, or one orbit. So I like it. You know it's risky, but it's a hand that flops all right. I think we're gonna let this one go though, mate. I know you it's a king and you don't trust the chip leader, but these chips mean so much to Art Papazian. I don't want to see him get crazy. You know what? If I'm trying to think in the profiles, did anyone sell action today? Yes. Uh wasn't it Alexei Boyka who sold 29 percent Oh man, those guys must be feeling really good right now. Yep. Tried to sell 33%, sold 29.8% at a 1.09 markup to 30 stakers. So they should be sweating the stream. So 3.2% was not sold. That's free money. He tried to give away and no one just took it. They just like, nah, I don't. It's too suspicious. There's a box of free money. Like there's something wrong with that money for sure. There's no such thing as free money. No, no, no. Well, All I right. mean, technically your table is a oh, would be. Shots <laughs> fired. <laughs> wow, I'm so offended. <laughs> no, but apparently, you know, even the bad players got to run good sometime, right? <laughs> well, we are sun running this month. <laughs> it's all good. Adrian Mateus takes this one down with his gutter ball. No clubs, but he knows that Nader doesn't want to do anything too wild as long as Art Papazian is hanging around. What is the pay jump again? It's around 60, 70 K, correct? Yeah, so we're guaranteed 196,000 when we get 254. I don't know what the difference is between those two. The math is a little tough for me. 58,000? 58. I'll look at the numbers and I'll let you know for sure. Nader opens from the button, but Borka has a hand where he will at least defend to it, but I have the feeling he's going to spice it. it up. You think he's going to yeah. shove? Yeah, I like yeah. it. The thing with King Queen is like your fold equity is very high already. You block all of the helps that want to call you with. And mm-hmm. you, you get called by two jacks, two tens, two nines. You're flipping anyways, and you just win so much in the middle. But Nador, he hasn't folded yet. And you know what the this best thing be about spicy. everything is? That what? even if you lose, you're still the chip leader. And that just feels so good. It's so nice <laughs> to jam. That even when you lose, you're still the chip leader. Like, what more could you really ask for? You know, that actually comes into play for some people. The, like, psychologically. Because sometimes you look at it, you shove, you lose. Where am I? Oh, I'll be in fourth yeah. place or third place. You're like, maybe I'll pass it up. Okay, I think you this is going to be this, a, though. For sure, in both. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Art has to call here with the suited ace. And he will make the call. It's obviously quite close, but ace five is ahead. 
And let's see what the flop brings. Oh, 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 we need an ace. We need an ace and an ace only. Or we are down to three and the rich get richer. That's not an ace. GG. Correct call. Unfortunate run out. Good game. Alexei Boyka now with 13.5 million, 13.6 million chips even. Well, now it's go time, right? Even for Nator, it's go time. If you open this, Alexei Boyka, Nator will jam on you immediately. And he knows. Well, so Nador gets a 254k minimum guaranteed now. Uh, not a great run for, for Papazi. I feel like dude, he just had a pretty simple final table. Got a bunch of pay jumps. 200k score for the guy who's only entered, I think, six times. That's a nice payday, Roddy. Absolutely. And he was fun. He gave us a little bit of chat. He gave us some banter. That was good. It's fun to have him. Definitely would love to see more of him. Neither had a much better hand pre-flop, but on this flop, I kind of like Adrian Mateus' uh, his hand. Yeah. What do you think the odds are here? Like at least 45% for Adrian, right? Yeah, he's the favorite. I think he's actually a slight favorite. Barely. I think it's like 45, 46, but let's take a look. Jam is a brilliant play. He's going to take this one down. Um, yeah, now I'm curious myself. Should I look it up for us? Yep. Look it up, mate. Must be very close, that's for sure. I don't think he's a favorite. Oh, he makes the call. We can wow, see. Wow, really? GG will tell. Wow, he's a massive favorite. Sixty-two yeah. percent. Well, now he's a forty percent. Needs to hit basically anything, guys. That is anything. Oh, the three. That is anything. The three <laughs> on the river will get it done. Adrian Mateus wins four point six million. Nader with a. Like, sick call, because he's ahead, but he's behind. Like, what do we make of that, Nanonoko? <laughs> that's the funny, that's, that's a very good point, because that is a sick call. But is it sick when you're behind, Roddy? I, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, guys, we are heads up, and it felt like this heads up was brewing for a little while. And Adrian Mateus is going to lose quite a few chippies almost immediately, because Alexei Borka is going to bump this one up. Yeah, it and was meant to be. Sixty-two percent. It wasn't an open ender. It was a gut shot and two life cards and a flush draw. Sixty-two percent. It's massive, but uh, ne nevertheless, Nat Nador, two hundred fifth quarter million dollars, great score for him. Yep. And now we play for ninety-eight thousand, hundred k practically. And I can't believe it's your guy. You picked him to win. You put some money down. It's kind of funny though, right? Like it's it's Mateos, the guy you wanted to bet on, yep. and the guy you did bet on. Yeah, but out well, of like, my bets, Boyka was the smallest bet, though. I think. Oh, you come winner. The winner. But I did pick huh? him. No, I you mean I don't him. even care about the hundred dollars I potentially win. I do care about getting another point on the board in our little prediction game, because I know you came out and you picked a couple winners because you knew about Michael Demo is very good and I wasn't that familiar with him. It's all good, Nanonoko. Over the last 20 weeks, you haven't picked a damn thing right, and I'm owning you left, right, and center. That's all I know. At least I got Ben Ward right, didn't I? Did, did I get him right? I think I did. I feel like he's the only guy I got right this in a long time. Oh. And he's set Threes. for Boyka. Or didn't you, did you say threes or fives? I forget that you said it was always threes. running hot threes. On the on this final table, like you know, I know we meme about the pocket fours, but I feel the pocket threes do very well at the final table in our shows. Yeah, I feel like it's funny. Like these are the small things I'm starting to care about more now, Roddy. Like ever since <laughs> I do these shows with you, I'm like, is it the threes you like? Is it the fours, <laughs> the fives? This is and my we'll... strategy, Nanonoko, because like. Uh, you know, in, in the far future, when the world goes back to normal, eventually we're going to have a GG poker showdown. Nanonoko versus Roddy. Final table betting. And this is my plan, the long con. I drag you down to my level with all the nonsense I spew, and then I beat you with experience. So that's that's the plan. I'm playing the long con over here, mate. It's a really long con, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Three, four. Oh. That's, I mean, this is a tough call to make with Ace High. Nice. Makes it. I feel like if we want to, uh, I understand he didn't want to risk too much, but 
Yeah, if you check, you lose, so may as well fire, and hopefully your opponent has absolutely nothing, but that wasn't the case. A6 against King8 offsuit. Looks all right for Adrian. Needs some help, though. You know what's funny is, like, normally you look at gut shots and you're like, yeah. But if you look at them in heads up, you're like, hmm, <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> Yeah, especially in heads up. And the thing is, in heads up, obviously we play so many more hands, we raise the button a lot more, we defend a lot more. So there's so much more garbage, so much more misses that gut shots, like if you just start firing with them, you yeah. kind of just take it down way more often. Absolutely. Ace deuce against king seven of spades. We are at least defending here. And that's what we all we will do. Speaking of a gut shot, there we have another one. Well, let's see if Boyka bets his gut shot because we didn't see Mateos do it with the King Eight last hand. The King Seven's gonna go fire. Yeah, it's tricky for Mateos. He did make a pair. Well, now it's not that tricky anymore as he makes strip deuces on the river. On a on the river card before it came out, he's like, "Oh man, do I call another river bet? What do I yeah. do?" But the deuce. The easiest card to call down again. Now Adrian is wondering, what can I bet that he will call? Feeling he's going to go big for like 800k. Oh, no, I was, I was actually going to say the 1.5 million. Like these guys, they whenever they hit these funny hands, they like to go for that big value. It's very common. Limp, 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 limp. Ah. Oh. Hey, you got another big blind. It's better than nothing. What do we do with the aces? Oh, he gives him hope. I mean, there is a flush draw now for Adrian Mateus. Oh, Nananoko. That's a decent bet. It's right? not going to work. You know, the, you know, there's no river bet that would get Boyko to fall. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, I guess it doesn't really. I mean, yeah, we have a flush, but obviously, you know, you're beat against any pair. It is hard to make a pair, though, especially in heads up, so... What do you think Boyka bets here? One mil? I think, I think, yeah, he goes near pot. I think he's just going to go for the max for against the jack. Mm -hmm. I think it makes a lot of sense. 1.5 million, maybe. Yeah. I actually think, you know, you don't love your flush, obviously, if there is a three of a kind on the board, but it's still hard to make a pair in heads up. Yeah, what I'd be thinking about if I'm a Tails is, well, if he had ace high, he would just check back this river. There's no reason for him to turn those hands in bluff. If he had queen 10, he probably would bet the flop a lot of queen 9. So what does he have that I beat that's a bluff? Nothing. Yeah. I like the fold. Well done. well done by Adrian. Yeah, but I mean, this wasn't like a crazy pot preflop, right? Because he just made it 2x, so you don't necessarily always put him on an ace either. Well done by Adrian. Definitely saved himself some chips there. It's a pretty good flop for Adrian Mateus, even though he's behind. I like his hand a lot. Yeah, I agree. If I had to choose one of these two hands, I'm choosing. Who's the favorite on the flop? Any idea? I'm not 100% That's a real sure. close. L look that one up. But Okay, I look, I look. I'll probably say Queen 7, but I think it's very close. Like 53, 47. <laughs> This is a big bet, by the way, while you're looking this up. Adrian Mateus just fired 1.4 million on the turn, and he takes it down with his pair of fours and the spade draw. Big so hand, who did by you the way. pick? Or what, did, what did you say? 53-47 in favor of the queen seven. No, it's a four deuce is a favorite. 50.1%. Ah. So pretty much a flip, a slight favorite. Adrian Mateus has outs, needs an ace or a four. Obviously, still has ace high, too. Boyka bets big on the turn. Okay, I'll probably we... see one more card with the ace five. Might have the best hand. You got to draw to a strong straight, ace high draw. Could... You have the ace of clubs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if that matters, but you know, like the three. You hit the if three. Another... 
yeah, if yeah, another hit the club rolls off, if another club rolls off, no, 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 you don't think it matters a yeah. little? It matters on the flop, on the turn. Like you, you, you're getting too adventurous. All right, Roddy, Mate. let's, let's calm I, down. I see the, Stick I to I the see four the cards. I see the potential nuts. I see the ace high blocker. Then we send it. Heads up or not heads up. Who cares? <laughs> Aces again. Adrian Mateus just got aces twice in his heads up, and Boyka already got aces too. It's raining aces. I've actually not seen this very often in Anoka. We are heads up for like, what is it, 10 minutes, and we've had three sets of aces. Yeah, now they're dealing them out. They needed around what was full ring to, to knock out some people, right? Like, yeah. these aces aren't getting much action. It's pretty sick. They just can just check back the two aces also. These guys hate these aces on these paired boards with these stack sizes, it seems. Nah, they're just trapping. Then, oh, and it's working. Look at that. They don't hate the aces, mate. He's trapping. He's going to get paid. Yeah. That that seems a little reckless. Um, I think he's going to fire again, though. I think he's going to lose a lot of chips here, mate. Yeah, I think he's going to lose like 2.5 million. Don't you feel that, too? Like he's, he's, uh, he's When you over bet the turn, you kind of look like you had a draw. A draw got there. Yep. So and he's got the king of spades. Like all the lines line, all the stars line up for him to just bet again and just say bye bye. Uh, easy call, I think, with aces. Like sure, you know, you could lose every now and then, but he's not folding aces here. Yeah, you're a little think... worried that he has a flush. You're a little worried he has a five. But you're not folding aces here. I agree. And Adrian, yep, Adrian Mateus does not fold aces and actually retakes the lead. Question mark? No, but it's very close. Well, you said these aces don't get a lot of action. I think it was a reasonable amount of action, Nanonoko. It was a lot of action, but almost a little undeserved, right? Like, it's kind of like, how did he get so much action against that hand? Uh, but I don't know. Well done. The trap on the flop yeah. got it all. The check back. Check back on the flop. Now, Adrian Mate is feeling it. Putting in the three bet here with the ace jack offset. It's playing well, man. It's playing well in the heads up so far. It is a match, a dogfight. Now, based on what you've seen so far, just the whole final table, not necessarily the heads up, who do you think out of these two have been playing the best? I can't answer that question. I, it's quite tough, but maybe yeah. you have an opinion. No, I, I think it's pretty even, man. I think they have both had a couple of strong moments. They both made maybe one or two minor missteps. I really don't think it would be fair for me to say, I think Boyka played better or I think Mateus played better. Mateus played better in the heads up so far, but it's also just because Borka got out of line at the wrong moment. And to me, it's very even. I don't feel like one of them deserves it over the other. No, there we go. May the better man win. That's how I stand in this. Oh, where'd I go? Okay, we're back. What? There's so many chips in the middle. Okay, yeah. three bet pot must be. Bet on the flop, call by the 10 would make the most sense. Four million in the middle. Yeah, last time Borka fired big, he obviously was not able to take it down as he got called off by Aces. We don't really know what happened there, guys. We apologize for some of the minor technical difficulties we experience every now and then. It's an online show. These things happen. As long as the players don't feel anything, I'm okay with it. Check, check on the turn, Nanonoko, with 3.8 million in the middle. I think if Boyka was going to go for it, he should have went for it on turn. Now he feels like his line is not that credible. It's too hard. Nice spot for Mateos. Um, so here's my random question, Roddy. I got sometimes I get some random moments in my head. I mean, yeah. Random questions, quiz questions, or whatever. Do you think we're going to see a Jal Vera heads up by the end of the year? Why are you trying to make me be mean to Jao Vieira? Man? No, like, it's I, just I, a question. It's not, it's not too personal. It's just a real question. No. Uh, well, the answer is no, because it's very hard to get heads up. It's very hard to make final table, first of all. And he's done that quite a few times. But then it's even harder to get heads up. He's obviously been a bit unlucky. But let's not forget about all these other crushes that still play this tournament that haven't made the final table in a couple of weeks. Like guys like Rune F, by the way, who was at the final table Saturday at the Omaha Lakes main event. I think that's very cool. I think I'm firing on Rune F, by the way. Final table betting, Omaha. Come on, the man loves any four cars. These other guys are going to get pay jumps that has Rune F written all over it for me. Uh, but no, I think the, my, my answer would be no. It's hard. 
But uh, speaking of Ruinef, though, he's actually really good at all games. So, like, he's a really good bet in, in Omaha for sure. Like, he plays all the mixed games, like, uh, all, all sorts of funny kinds. When, when they come to GG, like, I'm sure he's going to be playing all those tournaments, too. I'd actually love to, I'd love to play a couple of the random card games. Like, I don't even... Which, which you know, one? Like, which yeah, one? That's the thing. I don't even know what they're called. Like, I really don't play any of that, <laughs> Nananoko. Zero experience in my life. Like, almost zero. Other than I played online a little bit, just because it looked really fun. It was just me having a gamble. But it's like, you get two cards, and they are just for you. But then, like, the next three are public, and then you get, like, a private card again. Like, I don't know what that's called. Is that stud like, you, or what? Are you... You get two cards, they're private. Then you get yeah. three cards. Wow, that sounds like a game we're playing right now. No limit, hold them, Roddy. No, no, they're not community <laughs> cards. They are your cards. Oh, but the, the okay. entire table sees them. What is that game oh. called? You That's get like... actually many different versions of it, but it's stud in some fashion. Yeah, you yeah, can be playing I... stud Omaha. You can be playing stud hold them. Like, there's just like all sorts of different ones, right? Like, it's a... yeah. Okay. That game's like, actually quite tough, to, just to let you know. Nothing is tough, Nananoko, if you believe in it. StarCraft 2 is tough, okay? Everything else is doable. <laughs> StarCraft 2 is not tough, is it? It's very tough. Very <laughs> tough. Alexei Boyka firing here with his open-ended straight draw. Obviously, at this point, has the nut low, but River Cards could change it. Wow, wow. Mateus! Okay. That's what do we do now? Bold. So it was check, check on the flop. The check raise is the king high versus the four high. And to be fair, I don't know if Mateos can fire. Can he fire again? It'd be hard, right, with the jack pairing. It doesn't make any sense. But can Boyka fire? Yeah, he's got to. He's got four high and a huge pot. Even if he bets a small amount, like he should at least bet like 700k at the worst, because like, at least he'll get like 10 nines to fold, those 10 nine suiters, those 10 eights, and these types of hands. He got to bet something. Yeah. 1.2 mil, maybe. Make it really look like you want to get paid. That's, I don't know. These, these are tough spots, man. These are tough, tough spots. Because, like, the jack is such a weird card. If you had a queen, you wouldn't be going like five million all of a sudden, you know? Like, because you <laughs> would be bet calling the jack. Oh, Boyka does sense. fire. And Mateus can't do anything about it. Mate, that's so scary, you know, when you're sitting on the absolute not low and you're like, <sighs> and then you see him fall within like three seconds. You're like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Good. good. That, was a, that was a good hand of poker right there. Definitely time for another Elki final table, though. It's been a while. I don't think he's been playing them. No. If I recall. He's actually been doing pretty good. He has an overall a uh, positive win rate in the high roller super millions. Listen, our fish is too, he's too busy. <laughs> Sick fish is always busy. Yeah. It, um, I believe our biggest winners still. Let me see. Who's our biggest winners out there? Lena Isaac 900 and Damo. Yeah. Isaac Baron, I think, has a super good win record, too. Yeah, he's up almost a million too. Mm -hmm. Volkman's up a lot. Colonius is up a lot. I mean, Connor Drennan, he's up a lot, but I don't really want to say him because he kind of won like one million in one tournament. It's not really fair. Mm -hmm. You know, Ben Ward, the same, but like the real guy, the guys who show up every day, those are the guys I want to talk about. You know, like Arseny Malinov, he's one of our biggest winners. Yep. Oh, Ooh. funny uh, turn card here. Adrian Mateus improves to two pair, but obviously loses to a six. Alexei Boyka was firing with not a whole lot, but now all of a sudden he's got top pair and he may think it's good. That's funny. Would you ever, if you had a six there, would you ever check if you had a six? Probably not. I think the thing is, this board is too dry and the six is vulnerable, right? Like it's a 10 rolls off, a jack rolls off, your you're straight wouldn't be good no more. He's, this price Fun. he's probably going to pay. Yep. I bet Alexei Boyka expected to see a lot of hands, but not 9-7 there. He's like, 9-7? <laughs> All right. Moving on. Mateus retakes the lead. 
Yeah, so we, we've got, I'm looking at the thing, and we got a we got some guys who play all the time. They're the big winners. It's like uh, Elis Parsonen. He's a big winner. Yeah. Um, uh, Shankar Pillai. He's up a lot too. Arsili Manilov, Jay Anderson, Mr. Gamble, yeah, Isaac Ben, David Yan is up a lot too. Actually, he's he's he reaches every single final table, and then it's Volkman, Colonius. And Nicholas Estet and Adamo, these guys are like the biggest winners in in the Super Millions. That don't that play all of them, not the mm -hmm. the one time left boxes. I know. You know, Arthur has done quite all right too. But then the problem is when Arthur doesn't have a good day, he doesn't lose ten k or twenty k. Arthur <laughs> loses sixty or seventy, and then it becomes hard to really become one of the biggest winners in this tournament series. As Borka is firing a bluff here, by the way, on the Ooh. river. Is she Fair six is gonna make a call. I mean, it's a it's a good price. A lot of draws out there. Uh, oh, and he this hey is a man, real that's battle. a big one. Yeah, that's a big one for Boyka because if he's wrong there, like Mateus actually takes a pretty decent lead in his heads up, and obviously he's onto something. Now Mateus folds bottom pair. Boyka steals it away. You're right about Arthur. Arthur, he's still up a good amount, but he's not yeah. up nearly as much as these other guys because of how many entries he's put into the tournaments. He's actually like our our number, number four all-time caches, right? Yeah. But like he's like he's got 102 <laughs> entries lifetime so far into tournaments, and God knows if he puts in more bullets in this tournament, uh, I have no idea. So like he he could be <laughs> even more, but he's still a yeah, big I winner. Th I think this week he fired a couple. If I I don't know if it was six or that. that was last week maybe but yeah, Arthur fires in the hole. But hey, a couple final tables did take it down once. Six on the turn here. That's a I feel funny like you card. do the same thing, Roddy. It's like when you we're trying to check up on who we're gonna commentate on, then you're like, okay, here's the final table, but let's see who's in for the most bullets. Let's scroll down that little lobby and let's just see. Yeah, of course. No, seven, it's, fun. Eight. it's fun stats. Ooh. Fives make the call, but then let's say Boyka rivers the nuts. Well, not the nuts, but <laughs> he rivers safe. He's got the nut flush blocker, but he still has a pair of sixes. Yeah, I thought there were four hearts in the world. You're talking to me about like the how amount of entries everyone has. I saw another heart there and then a no call. Forgive me, okay? I thought there were four hearts in the center. It's, it's pretty funny because like it's so far from the nuts, not even close. It's like the 1,000th nuts. Yeah, but it's like, oh, I wonder what Roddy thought there was. Well, did he really think there were four hearts in the center or not? He does bet, by the way. Let's it's focus on that part. Look at this thin value bet, huh? The third yeah. pair. Flushes get there, everything. It, Boyka is really on point on, on these value bets. But will Mateus pay this one off? <laughs> That's pretty hard. He paid off yeah. by worse. But, oh, oh wow. it makes the call! Amazing. Wow. I mean, the nuts just pay, Nananoka. You river the nuts, you get paid. <laughs> no, I apologize, guys, for a second. I, I really thought I saw four hearts. I... Nuts Nananoka. between the two people's hands. Not, not yep. possible hands, but I, he had I to get avoid your point. A, he had to avoid a lot of cards, to be honest. Like every five, every three, and then I think every deuce and every seven. So and kind He's of hit the it. jack, and he's hit that six. Riding good. Now nah, he's playing great. Surprised. Uh, I felt that bet was a little big for how strong he flopped. But... Yeah, I think he's got a little bit of a mixed strategy. I mean, I, I feel like when you got stacks this deep, you kind of can go all over the place with bet sizing, you know? Like, you know, if your opponent happens to have something, they want to lose more chips, let them do the opportunity to do so. <laughs> you know you're feeling good when we're raising three dudes suited. And you're getting a better hand of fold, right? The three nine. Nine eight against nine three. Adrian Mateus will let this one go. I don't really mind that. Like I know that in heads up you're supposed to play most of your hands and you want to raise your button, but if you're looking at absolute garbage and you've already been losing a couple of pots in a row, I really don't mind the occasional fold. Yeah. Oh. I agree. I think that hand's a little bit too weak, especially with these players. They're gonna defend their big plan properly. It's mm -hmm. just you don't need to raise every single hand, but you do need to play a lot. And it does seem like these two guys are playing a raising strategy, so there's there's no limping happening. So if you are doing a limping strategy, then you'd be throwing those hands in there, uh, trying to see free flops. 
Borka checking the flop, firing big on the turn, hoping that Mateus is an unbeliever and picked up a little something something, but that was not the case. Ten Deuce is going to race. Let's see what Borka does with nine eight. Like I'm expecting him to absolutely at least call, but I, I'm feeling a three bet. Uh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny that you you thought about that. Like that's just such a a weird timing thing for you, Roddy. Like I don't know how you even read into it because it's not really a hand you three bet too much. He's feeling it, that's why. So human nature. Now Adrian Mateus is gonna bump this one up real big. And Barker can obviously just let it go. Don't do it, Barker. There will be better moments. And he doesn't. I mean, he has now all of a sudden taken a five million chip lead Nananoko. Nine minutes to go till the next break. Are we gonna get there? Probably. I mean, God, look how deep we are. And these guys aren't actually, they're playing a bit more grindy than some of our other heads up matches, right? Like, like they're not dunking it off and calling down with nine, a pair of nines, you know, ace high boards, you know, sort, sorts of things. Like, these guys are grinding out pretty good. 1.2. There we go. 1.25. Boyka takes another one down. Really frustrating when you're Adrian Materius. Ooh. This could be a nice little pot. It should be a three bet the king queen. It should be a call to Jack Ten suited. Um, this yep. hand is too strong not to three bet. Yeah. Jack Ten suited. It doesn't get much prettier than that. May not be as good as aces or kings, but it looks damn good. And he flops best. And this is a awkward spot for Adrian Mateus. Two point six million in the middle. You kind of feel obligated to see bet, right? Yeah, if you are, you're going to bet a quarter pot, a third pot for him. It's not going to work. Nope. He needs a king or a queen on the turn. That's an absolute brick. It does feel like checking is giving up, but... But you got like, to, right? Like. Yeah. Opponent calls your three bet, he calls his flop, he could have a jack, he could have an eight, he's not folding those hands. Well, if you bet you're hoping the ace high folds, but you don't if you don't know what you're up against, it's just too much too much of a gamble. You guys gotta give up. Yep. It really sucks. Wow, he does not want to give up, keeps betting. I mean Jack Ten is really not going anywhere, but I have the feeling that Boyka might even race here. Uh, he just makes the call. What a run out for Boyka. Oh, you just love to see it now. If you're calling down with Jack 10, 4, 3. Well, Mateus didn't want to give up on the turn. He will give up on the river. And I think Boyka at this point already knows that he's good. <laughs> uh, running out. He's going to check it down. What a monster pot for Alexei Boyka. Well done. Power of position. Yeah, and you know what? uh time banks are really short for both players and this heads up if it gets you know back and forth a bit more it's really going to come into play um but obviously your guy with a four to one chip lead you got money on him you picked him to win it's i can't believe i can't believe you're <laughs> going to put your money on mateos and now you pick the right guy to put money on you're going to freaking win and pick the winner again freaking brutal it's brutal, Roddy. Like, how do you do it? Are we getting a little tilted over there, Nananoko? <laughs> a, a little bit. A little bit. Like, because you're running hot. Like, I know you're feeling good, considering, like, you've been doing good at the tables. Tell me you're feeling good about this bet, Roddy. Like, honestly. Uh, uh, you're trying to jinx it? I'm not, I'm not even playing your games, Nananoko. Yes, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good because I put my confidence in a strong Belarusian man who has been playing solid poker and he's running good right now. He's out flopping Mateus when it matters the most. He's making a lot of correct calls. Yeah, everything is going according to plan. 17 million against 3 million. But if you guys We've are new to that. our show, it is <laughs> never over until it's over. We have seen miraculous comebacks time and time again. So don't get too carried away. If you got money on Alexei, Boyka to win it. Don't start spending it just yet. Don't fire up that high roller, assuming you're going to win this bet, because, guys, it's not that easy. Look, last week, we actually saw the same chip stack. It was 17 million to, like, 2 million, right? It, he lost it. But this is not a domino plane. Boyka, he's solid. He, he's not going to lose these ships. 
It's looking real dire. Let's see how this hand plays out. King three is obviously ahead at this point, but it's not a board that you're in love with. But king high, backdoor draws. Colin, oh. pair three. Makes you feel a little better about your hand. <laughs> Makes you feel a lot better about your hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really good. Like, how can you ever lose this hand? Impossible. Well, if your opponent had an eight, it's loose, but... <laughs> yeah, with that line, impossible. Boyka takes it another one down. Adrian Mateus is now playing 21 big blinds. <laughs> Get seven dues immediately. Yep. And this guy sold 30%, left 4% on the table. Nobody wanted it. He's going to ship all the money. You know, you should be mad at me a little bit, though, Roddy. Because remember how you were like, okay, I'm going to bet on Yuri and someone else. You're like, I got one more guy to bet on. I think I'm going to bet on Alexei Boyka is what you said. And I said, what about Sam Greenwood? And you're like, oh, yeah. Maybe I'll just, I didn't, you did the 40-40. I think you were just going to put on Boyka alone. And I haven't told you, I said, this seems like your type of guy. Russian name, right? You got tricked by him last week because you're like, oh, he's, is he from Mexico? Like, what's going on? He's a fake. <laughs> he's a fake, right? So it was, uh, but, uh, man, I'm so salty right now. Whoa. Nice turn for Adrian Mateus, though. He does make a pair of fives and obviously had the flush draw. He's got to be feeling pretty good about his hand. He's probably going to bet this one again with the 5-3. It's hard to have the best hand. You get a lot of equity, get a lot of better hands to fold. Somehow he's got the best hand, but he's targeting those sevens and queens, and they'll be really tough. Gotta say, though, Boyka's doing a really good job and just hanging in there, right? And like calling when he's ahead, and he often gets out of trouble when things are starting to look dire for him. He limps with 10 5. Adrian Mateos had a, I think, better hand, a more playable hand, but just doesn't flop anything. And this is where we see the power of having a big stack in heads up. Boyka can just fire away. Big Ooh. Oh, no, 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 GG. no. Congratulations, Roddy. You got oh. it done with the ace queen. Ace queen is the nuts on this final table today. Nador did it over and over again. Ace queen has indeed been doing very good. Boyka is going to make it 1.2 million, 1.3. And Mateus is going to probably just ship it all in. And Boyka will call it off. Oh, it's just yeah. we're not gonna waste any time. Jeez. Ace queen against ace eight suited. GG. Here we go. Or yo, the I hate you, Nananoko. You're such a <laughs> the diamond. You're such a prick. <laughs> Why do you always do this? I hate it. <laughs> uh, he's totally back in it. He's got seven million. Okay, that's so good. All right. Well done, Nanako. Ace eight guys making the flush on the turn. Oh, you oh. still got the two to one chip later, Roddy, but he was a big favorite to win that one. Oh, that was a hundred k heads up match too. <clears throat> Jeez, that's brutal. That is indeed brutal, but you got to keep your head calm if you're Alexei Boyka, and just keep doing what you've been doing. You've been playing great, and you got it in great there. It is what it is. These things happen. Let's try to just take it away again. One chip at a time. This is already a 1.5 million chip pot, by the way. Ooh. Oh, that check is just after that last hand, it's just going downhill. Mateos is back in it. And he's going to get paid off with this bet. He's getting paid off for sure. Yep. There you go. 4.5 million pot heading into Adrian Mateus' his way. And he is back to 9.4 million. I have a really hard time doing commentary with you, mate. You are the worst. The absolute worst. All right. Alexei Varka, ace 10 offset. Let's bump it up. No, it does not bump it up. But it does flop a 10 high flush draw. Not bad. Fair fight. I kind of like the ace 10 a little bit better. Me too. Back to a straight draws too. There we go. Ten of spades. Obviously, will improve Borka's hand quite a bit. Feeling good now, Roddy? I mean, you sucked out of the ace ten. Oh you my god! Feel... <laughs> Mate, I am not against Adrian Mateus. I think he's really cool. And my my like the one week I was sweating it a bit is like limitless against Ferrari, man. Okay, because <laughs> it wasn't just the fact that I I had like a hundred bucks on nine to one, you know, which is a pretty decent sized bet. But it's also that it's literally limitless 
against a guy called Ferrari Man with a Ferrari avatar who's won like forty dollars in his GG poker career, and then he beat Limitless. That pissed me off, but <laughs> no, he played great. All right, guys, we have made it to another break. We are three hours in. We're going to take a couple of minutes for ourselves. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the show, and we'll see after the break who's going to take down week 42 of the High Roller Super Millions. Stay tuned. You think this is a game? You think this is a game? Well, actually, it is. And you can join me for my $5,000 showdown on GG Poker. And watch me on their YouTube channel Tuesday, March 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time or 11 p.m. Gumit Geneva, you know, Greenwich Mean Time. That's the GMT. And uh, I will see you there, guys. What is it? Four o'clock East Coast, uh, four o'clock, four o'clock West Coast, seven o'clock East Coast, wherever you are. Figure it out and be there. Hello, everybody. Daniel Grano here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations. You know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus Kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's gonna fold that, right? That's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flop the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry, you don't even have to lift a finger. First, simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop up window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal, and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future. So keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.
Welcome back, everybody, to the High Roller Super Millions Week 42, where we are heads up between Adrian Mateus and Alexei Boyka. Should we have been heads up, guys? No, it should have been all over. But Nanonoko decided to congratulate me on my victory, and we know that that's where it all goes wrong. So let's see what actually happens here at the tail end of all of this. Yep, confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> You are the sickest. Each and every single week you do it again. <laughs> it's unreal. <laughs> yeah, the time banks are actually for uh, Alexei in particular, very short. Yeah, both players, and they've been playing some crafty sp spots where they do need some time to think. So, um, yeah, and they've got a, obviously with the big swing and stacks again, like it's going to be very, very important. Jack 10 suited. Jack 10 of hearts, even my favorite hand. We'll take it now. Blinds go up 100k, 200k. Becomes a little easier for Nanonoka to calculate the big blinds. That's always nice. I kind of prefer the 100k a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I would really like it if it was a 1 million big blind. Like, I would nail it so easy. The 100k hey. still got a little work. Fun question What is the highest big blind that we have seen in these 42 weeks? I'm not sure, but if I was to guess, I want to say 400,000. What are your thoughts? No, it's been more. It's definitely been higher than 400, because we've had a long show, I remember, in the past, right? But then the structure was a little bit different before, too. So yeah. I'm not too sure. Maybe a half a thanks, million, even. Thanks for your your random questions. We, we've got our own little unique twist to it. I like to ask the Jalvera type questions, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You always want to make it personal. I don't want to make any enemies at the High Roller Super Millions, mate. <laughs> let's, uh, let's win a couple of offline poker events before we ever start getting any sort of an ego in this game. <laughs> at this point, I'm happy I win an orange stable with 1-2 Oma, okay? <laughs> okay? You just keep getting it done. All right, here we go. So we got a little pair, 7-10, mandatory bet. I'd go big. I like it. And he does go big and he takes it down with the 10 high flush draw and the gutter ball. Ooh, a screen. The nuts. Adrian Mateus. <laughs> Adrian Mateus. Okay. Little out of line. Jack 5 offset. It's the Jackson 5. It's my favorite. <laughs> Adrian will let it go. He's like, all right. I believe you have a hand that's slightly better than Jack 5 offset. And he wasn't wrong. This Running good. Another, yeah, it seems like another nice one for Alexei. He's extending his lead. We like where this is going. Decides to check back bottom pair, though, which I'm a little bit surprised by. But Bet big. Mateos, bet big. I don't know if he folded, though. We also have a gut shot. Bottom pair. Oh, chop, nice. Chop. chop it up. Why are you so against Mr. Boyka? What has he ever not... done to you, Nenoko? <laughs> he's done nothing. He's done nothing. I like Boyka. I think he's. I actually said at the very beginning that I think he's a good person to bet on because I know he got he got beat in the last week really quickly when he reached out that hand, but he showed a lot of signs of someone who wants to ship a tournament, and look, he's in the final two. <laughs> Mateos doesn't want to race here. Obviously, there is a flush on the board, so he decides to just call, and they will chop it up. I feel like we're always just like, the tension is rising because we're just waiting. It's like, all right, when do yeah. they both have a proper hand? When are they both going to go for it? The ace, queen, ace, eight, that was the one. But it's not over. These are actually really sick flips, right? Like, obviously, they're both already happy and they've both done amazing this week at the High Roller Super Millions, but it's a 100k difference. That's 10 bullets. That's, yeah. a, that's a lot of European and Arthur Marty erosion <laughs> buy ins you can put in there. I, I was about to say that is an Arthur day. Ace four of diamonds against pocket sevens. Some people will three bet this hand. He's going to call. And no, oh, you. Yeah, well, I not should have three bet because he would have still saw a flop. Uh, yeah, yeah, sucks. I guess you're gonna lose some chips, huh? 
Yep. You don't want to give up sevens on this board because if you give it up on this board, you always give it up. Uh, with the queen, it becomes a bit more acceptable, I think, to let it go if your opponent bets again. He might still call, though, because of how many draws there are. Wow, well, overbet. Overbet means four or draw. And if that's the case, I think the seven's going to call one more. Be a big call. It's a nine big blind bet. It is a is a big call. Okay, he does fall. He's just kind of like, with no time bank, though, it's tough too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, tricky. Greed. Only... The greed really gets these players a lot, huh? Don't you feel like a lot of times these guys go for the over bets, they never get called? And they always have it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think they always have it. I feel like they've been balancing their ranges pretty all right. Like this one by Mateus. Obviously, we knew that Boyka had a very weak end, but still nice to just take it down with a queen eight. Let it go, Mateus. And he lets it go. I actually really like the way that Adrian Mateus has played today. Yeah, you, you think he's a good person to model your game after? Mm -hmm. For sure. I mean, the numbers don't lie, right? He's a very successful MTT player. And... Uh, I think this final table appearance kind of shows it. It wasn't all smooth sailing. Like the first hour and a bit, it was all going absolutely perfect. Then we started losing a couple of chips and then it became dire. But as soon as he found his comfortable place again, he's just really not making a lot of mistakes. Yeah. I feel like um, your favorite player or someone to like really model your game up because it's a little bit easier to do. If I had to choose between all of our winners, it would be Isaac Theron. Do you think I'm right on that one? I think he's, I think he's way above my pay grade. <laughs> like I'm saying, I, I, like, I, uh, yeah. you, like some of these guys are really hard to try to like play mm -hmm. their style, right? Like Adamo or something. But I think Isaac Barron's doable in some sense. Yeah, I mean, I like to think of a Romashka, but <laughs> <laughs> an 0 0.1 second better. That's who I am than Anaka. All right, so we had a flop bet, a little straight out there. A seven would be really annoying for Boyka. Is he going to fold the best hand? Is he going to call? It's no time bank is, is really hurting here. I think he calls. Nice call. Yeah, we still need to survive the river, though. There's three million in the middle. It's hard to bet again. Not a lot of guys do it on a four straight because obviously they would never fold a seven. But if he can do it, I think it will work. 1.5. 2.4. Oh. Brilliant. Well done, Mateus. Well done. Excellent timing. Didn't have it, but doesn't matter. Takes the lead. He's up to 11.2 million and a no call. Not, <laughs> not bad not... for a guy who finished in second place, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like last week. The guy who finished in second won the tournament, right? Like, how did Yuri do it? Um, it's not over, the second obviously. week. If Mateus wins, it'd be the second week in a row that somebody turns a 17 million to 3 million deficit around. Like, it's pretty mental. Yeah. Pretty yeah, mental. That'd be really crazy. I forget what the chip stack started in the last week's heads up, but um, yeah, I, I don't remember. But I know he had a big chip lead, uh, Adama. And then it became even bigger, and then it was reduced, and then it became another massive chip lead, and it got reduced again. And then, yeah, Yuri's performance last week was unreal. What about his performance this week? <laughs> also, also unreal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's a bet on the flop, an over bet on the turn of just a pair of deuces. It'd be really hard for him to continue here. But maybe the big bet is just a draw. <laughs> Okay, they always have a draw, man, but they never go. Well, they had a they had trip for oh, a couple of hands ago. <laughs> trip. You got me. You got me. Ah, queen nine limping. That's actually kind of funny because most of the time when they limp, they have very weak hands. Seems like Boyka takes the bait with queen four offsuit. He, I mean, it's not like queen nine initiative. is. Yeah. yeah. Queen nine is obviously not that great either, but do we take it down? We do take it down. All right. A That's very a random. For limping. If you raised, you would have won the pot. Ace four against the weaker version of the Ben CB powerhouse, but still pretty good. 
How full? Like how, so the weaker version is the offsuit. I thought you'd go like hearts, clubs, and diamonds. We know the spades is the absolute nut powerhouse. Okay. Well, Mateus makes the call here with bottom pair. Boyka has ace high and obviously does have a gut shot. He's going to bet again. Wow. It's a big bet. It's going to work, you think? And if he gets yeah. called again, he's going to fire one more, I imagine. But it's really hard. Wow, he calls him king six. But the nine is so hard to fire again. It's too likely your opponent has the six, seven, uh, five, seven, eight, seven. Like, oh, wow, if he could fire, this would be amazing. But no, he's, he's going to wish he as did. Well. Yeah, <laughs> looking back at it, looking at the hand that Mateus had. Yeah, he wishes he did too, but... It's obviously very hard to make that call in the heat of the moment. And don't forget about that time bank, guys. Only 15 seconds left for Alexei Boyka. And after that, he will have five seconds and then five additional seconds to make every decision. That may seem like enough time, but in some spots, that's really not enough time. And we have absolutely seen people make mistakes because they had no time. Well, Boyka has the nuts here, so he should be all right. I like to check. Just try to yeah. bait your opponent to betting. Seems like his opponent's weak. More likely to get some value by checking, but it uh, doesn't work. That honestly feels so good if you're Mateus, where you're like, I had nothing. I'm supposed to bet, but I just gave up. And then you see your opponent had the nuts. You're like, I'm good. <laughs> right. Because don't you hate it when you like you check and you see your opponent saying, I should have bet, man. I made a mistake. Yeah. And then you lose. <laughs> and then you're like, God damn it. Like he won the battle, but he lost the war right there and yeah. then. <laughs> Well, we all know about King Six by now, guys. That's a, that's a raising hand if I've ever seen one. <laughs> weaker if people power. ever ask me, it's like Roddy, what have you learned from commentating a 10k final table for almost a year straight? Only thing I can respond is that pocket fours always make a set, but I already knew that, and that King Six is really good. <laughs> oh, okay. I think we got a Boyka back in contention pot coming up. Yep. I imagine it goes check, check, and then a big bet coming from the 10-5. The ace is actually not a good card. Kind of might kill Boyka's action. Mm, I think he should get paid. Unless he goes super greedy. But these guys like to go greedy, that's the thing. Like, if you bet a million, easy call, right? But... It's a little greedy. Mateus has a slightly more time left in his time bank, so he can go over the hand for a split second. Oh, he beats 7 9 and Jack 9. Hmm. Lose to a lot of 10s. 10s would definitely play this way. Mateus, he's going to get away, man. This is a smart man. He's adjusting. It's hard to fault. Strong pairs and heads up. He's on nice. the river. He does get away. So Vojka wins some chips, but perhaps not as many as he should have won. Those chips are really important right now. I'll tell you that. Like You need to get any chip you can get with these big hands. I've got a bad feeling about this hand. I've got, I'm feeling a four. I'm feeling a four and I'm feeling that Boyka's in trouble. Okay, it's a five. Can right. you feel good now? I mean, he's got a pair, just a pair. Free value. I don't know why he checked, though. I actually have no idea why he checked the two jacks. I'm with like, you. That seems like free value on flop turn in river with this hand. Well. He does fire now, and since Mate oh no, you had a Adrian bad feeling, but the wrong way the cards will run out. <laughs> Adrian Mateus makes two pair on the river. Alexei Boyka probably looks at this and feels still feels really good about his jacks. Makes a big bad Mateus snap calls with his two pair, and scoops a six point one million chip pot. And for a man who had 3 million chips a while ago and got it in with ace-8 against ace-queen, all of a sudden he is looking mighty fine in this heads-up battle. Yeah, but it can turn around again, Roddy. It's not, it's not over. You know it. Oh, I know it. 
Unless you tell me that Mateus has won the tournament, then I feel pretty good. And I'm like, well. I mean, I cannot curse it that many times in a row. It eventually stops, Roddy. Otherwise, we'd be here forever. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you run out of steam at one point. Boyka bets his pair of sixes. Do you think a suck out will happen with the 8 4? I feel like you think the answer is yes. Just given how yeah. things are going. You're a momentum player, Roddy. Queen, I feel queen, it. Queen of spades on the river. Oh, okay. Never mind. It's not <laughs> over. Boy, guys, safe. But if Mateus... Okay, Mateus does not fire. Goes check, check. The six is good. So Borka absolutely back in it, wins a, a very important pot for him, man. Because if those four million chips would have gone to Mateus' way too, it becomes pretty dire. Now it's still very close. Yeah. And the time bank just keeps getting smaller and smaller. What are we doing with 7-6? Whoa. Wow. Out of line. Oh, oh. And... This is kind of bad because their stack to pot ratio is getting smaller and smaller. Yep. Mid pair for Boyka, top pair for Adrian Mateus. Both players hold one spade. It's pretty bad too because when you check. Uh oh. That's the yeah. kind of turn where you fall in love with your 7 6. You just love it, but you're still behind. <laughs> but you don't feel behind, but you're pretty behind. Yeah. And then your, your opponent checks that flop too. You're thinking your hand's good for sure. Gets called in the queen of spades. It's top two pair, but the seven six is in a kind of a weird spot. Checks. Hmm. Well, how much will Mateus bet? I definitely, I wouldn't go greedy here. Like, I think that's unnecessary. Just try to probably... close it out with a three million bet, right? Like, chip no. him down. No, he's going for it all. Will it end, Roddy? It no shouldn't time. end. It shouldn't. Oh, he has no time. The time bank. Well, he had a couple seconds, but he just called it off there with a pair of sevens. Just like that, Nananoko, it is all over. Adrian Mateus wins week 42 of the High Rollers Super Millions and walks away with $428,000. He had seven extra seconds there, Nananoko. Why? He wanted to make the curse real? Uh, I, I, I don't know, Roddy. What the... Let's talk about the final hand while it's fresh in our mind real quick because we didn't get the time to talk about it because obviously the tournament ended, but I don't like the call, Roddy. He did I have the like time that. seven seconds. He should take the extra time. It's 20 big blinds. Here's the problem with the call. With the holding the seven six, you block the draws you're trying to beat. You know, like the A6, the King Six, or whatever. You know, like the six X. You're holding that hand. So it's more likely your opponent actually has a hand, right? And yeah, you maybe you know what he was thinking is like, oh, I blocked this straight, I blocked the flush, yeah, but like you also block the hands that he's gonna bluff with, you know? You don't block the straight because you don't think about eight five suited in three bet pots or something like that that much, you know what I mean? Like, I think it was a misstep. I think the time bank got to him, and I think that's yeah. why he's out, Roddy. I think you're right, and I think you've done it again, Nananoko. It didn't look like it, guys. It looked for a long time that Alexei Boyka was going to win his very first High Roller Super Millions, but it wasn't meant to be. He got so close. Ace, eight of diamonds against ace, queen, offsuit. But he flopped up pair. Flush got there on the turn, and after that, it really feel like the table's turned. Mateus came into this final table as chip leader. Eventually lost that lead. Became somewhat short, even in the heads up, but turned it around and came out on top anyway. Honestly, played very well. Excellent performance by him. I did not win any of my bets, but if you guys did put some money on Adrian Mateus, I uh, congratulate all of you guys that did. We do have that uh, show that you mentioned, Nananoko, starting in one hour and ten minutes, I believe, over at this channel with Russell Peters. You said you watched some of his material. I am completely oblivious to it, so... Let the audience know, why should they watch Nanonoko? He's a real funny guy. Like, uh, I mean, you can definitely find it on Netflix, like 100%. All those different streaming services. They have all the comedy shows now. Yeah. Uh, really funny guy. Um, I believe on the, the, the show that's going to happen soon, like an hour or whatever you said, he will be actually live streaming it. So uh, he's going to just tell some jokes. Maybe you'll be a fan and then you'll want to watch his thing. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's happening in the, in that little contest, but he's a funny guy. 
Um, I definitely think you should, guys should check them out. And I might even check it out if I'm not asleep. And apparently, every single time you knock him out, you get a fifty. You get a fifty tournament dollars, if I read that correctly, for each KO of Russell. So he's probably just gonna fire in the hole. So you want to get him at your table and try to knock Russell Peters out a couple of times and scoop up those tournament dollars that you can then use for the Spring Series that will start on April fourth. I'm really looking forward to uh, what the whole Deadmau5 thing is about because I see the little mouse head in some of the banners and I wonder what they're going to do with him. That's exciting. Overall, a fun final table, Nananoko. Uh, I think we had a couple of cool hands. Definitely a couple of odd ones too. Uh, I'm a bit sad that we lost our reigning defending chap so early. Like, I don't think Yuri had to go when he went. Yeah, those sixes. I wasn't a very big fan of that. Not just because it didn't work out, but even if it does work out, I'm like, ah... The advantage is so small there. I don't know. I don't have much else to say. It's been a long show. You know, the times have changed too over here. Like, it used to start an hour earlier for me. So now it's almost midnight. So this is where you start waking up. And this is where I start getting a little tired. It was a really solid final table. Um, I don't think it was the craziest. But, you know, it just shows how Adrian Matilis is a really solid player. And Boyko, I think he played really good. Uh, maybe the heads up. Eh, a little bit not... Not personally my style, but he still played pretty good. Uh, but in general, nothing too crazy. I was like all of our favorite players, they kind of just busted out really quickly in the first hour. We lost a lot of guys and we lost Romashka. I feel like he was the guy who was, he, but he had his moment. Like there was a lot of, he, he had a short like five, 10 minutes where he just went, I don't know, played every single hand, but uh, it, it was quite fun. And uh, next week is a, is a new one. Next week is a new one. Of course, we do recommend, or we don't recommend, but if you guys want, you can actually watch this tournament play down to the final table every Sunday night. And it's really quite cool, especially when it goes down to like the final 22 to just open up these tables and see what they're all doing. Uh, obviously, you don't see their cards then, but it's still very fun to just rail it a bit from the side. And obviously, we'll be back next week on Tuesday to cover another final table. And I do want to mention one more time that this Saturday on this channel, I will be covering the final table of the Omaholic series main event. Runef is at that final table. And I'll be joined by Sasha, who is our resident PLO expert. So he doesn't approve of my place, but it's a lot of fun. I'm already looking forward to that show. And I think that's it, Nano, unless you have something else you really want to share with the viewers. I guess uh, one last comment, Roddy, is you, did you do final table betting on that one, Runef? Feel like Not yet, should. but I will. I will. I will. Yeah. Okay. You definitely should. I think, especially as a main event, the field is larger, so there's more likely to be some weaker players in there. Yep. So he's got like an even bigger edge. Um, so put your bankroll down, Roddy. It's free money. Not Just like a domo yeah. last week. We are not doing that, but we'll definitely fire a little bit. Obviously, you guys can always find these tables, just show like the running tournaments, open the tournament lobby, and then there is a beautiful green button that says final table betting. All right. That's it for us. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And obviously come back in an hour where you guys can watch a little bit of Russell Peters. Maybe just fire away and hopefully you guys pick up some tournament dollars. Stay tuned. Stay well. Good luck in the Spring Series and see you next week. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.